minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. Coolest Reptile Podcast in the World, episode 449, all in the Tree Tuesdays with Vincent of VC Reptiles. What is good, everyone? I'm your boy, MJ. Happy Tuesday. Hope your week's going good thus far. If this is your first time hanging out, if you're into keeping reptiles, if you're especially into learning more about reptiles, how to keep them the best way you can keep them and possibly learn how to breed them and all that great stuff, this is the podcast to be associating yourself with because I bring only the best that are doing it in the reptile game to this podcast so make sure you hit that like button all right especially if you're in a green tree pythons and a boreal species tuesday night's your night all right so hit that like button hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell select all and you won't miss any of the podcasts i drop here or any piece of content that i drop here on this channel um you can listen to trap talk reptile podcast on all the major audio platforms buzzsprout apple spotify google play so wherever you listen to trap talk reptile podcast thank you so much really means a lot shout out to all the early birds see you guys uh, let's get straight to the point. U.S. Arc number one, support U.S. Arc. If you are in the reptile game, it is crucial that you at least understand what U.S. Arc is here for. So go down to the second link if you want to learn more. All right. But more importantly, if you've been considering becoming a member, do it tonight. Let's go. We need those numbers. Let's help U.S. Arc fight for animal rights. Phil Goss, you're the man. Anyone who supports U.S. Arc, you're the man or woman. Thank you so much. But yeah, shout out to U.S. Arc. If you're looking for exclusive content, if you want to get tapped in more than what you see out of each episode, if you want to meet the trappers, 200 people who are just killing it in the game, and if you want to network yourself with the best doing it in the game, go down to the very first link at the top in the description. Click on it. Join the Trap Talk Patreon family. As soon as you join the Trap Talk Patreon family, you get a link to the Discord. That's what will tap you with the entire 200 trappers we have in this family, and then also you get connected to the ID group chat, man. Trappers, you guys are my heart. Cannot wait. Big things popping this year. This is our year, 2024. See you at the top. It's going to be awesome, man. Uh, tonight's episode, let's get straight to the sponsors, man. Shout out to David Brahms over at the Reptile Perch. If you're getting into the reptile, uh, excuse me, if you're getting into the arboreal species game, right? I know a lot of you are because my DMs are full daily. All right. And I'm not even joking. People are asking me, MJ, I'm ready to make the moves. I'm doing it. I'm getting into green tree pythons. I'm getting into emerald tree boas. I tell them, well, make sure your perch game is on point and you go to reptileperch.com thereptileperch.com and also follow the reptile perch on ig let david brahms know that mj from the trap sent you and he will take extra extra good care of you man that's my man shout out to david brahms appreciate it also shout out to my boy blake over at blake exotic feeders implementing quail is crucial i feel like diversity is everything and we are talking about it a lot more on this uh tuesday night segment every week we talk about diversity man all, all over the all over the, the, the weekly uh, channel, uh, all over the weekly episodes that Trap Talk has, we talk about diversity. And I'm telling you right now, quail is a good source of diet to implement into your routine with your reptiles. All right. So a lot more to be discussed on that. And why don't you check out last month's uh, sponsorship highlight with Blake that's in the video section. And again, go to Blake Exotic Feeders on IG. Go follow him. All right. Uh, go to Blake Exotic Animal Ranch to place your order for quail. Or hit up Blake directly. Go to him, go to IG directly and let him know that MJ sent you and he'll take care of you, man. He'll, he'll really hook you up. He's building a solid like list of first time customer uh, clientele right now. So right now it's your time to head over and get some good deals with Blake. Shout out to Blake, shout out to the sponsor, man. And then also shout out to my man, number one arboreal breeder on YouTube for sure. Gary Shavino from GS Reptiles. This guy's killing it on so many levels. Mad props to Gary for just doing everything that he does. He's such a huge influence to so many of us, all right? And I'm talking all the way from the newbies that are coming into the game to the OGs that respect this guy. So type in GS Reptiles on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, and be ready for all of GS Reptiles content. He is dropping an episode Friday, okay? This Friday, it's going down. So if you hit that subscribe button, 
you'll be notified about his vlogs that he drops on Fridays. Not every Friday. I'm trying to push him for it, but either way, shout out to Gary Shabino. And then shout to shout to these two guys. What's up? <laughs> Not again. And then yeah, and, and he's connected to his bullshit Wi-Fi. Can you disconnect from your Wi-Fi, buddy? Because it looks like no. shit. It looks like shit. Oh, jeez. Everything. Yeah, I'll, I'll do. I'll try. I feel like he's trolling us. I feel like either someone's setting him up to do this or paying him, which I would have to be a lot. The last time, the last time you told me that it looked perfect. The well, time before Wi-Fi? last. Are you on Wi-Fi? Or are you not on Wi-Fi? I'm on Wi-Fi. Take get the fuck off Wi-Fi, Marshall. Didn't we discuss this last week? How's that? hundred percent worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god listen bill I, I you know you never let me down buddy how you doing man you, you look your, your audio your video looks great how you feeling dude i should be asking you how you're doing with all that floods and shit dude i mean i, I want to say it was worse the first time that came around two weeks ago you know we got hit two weeks ago and whatnot um and, and i want to say that we're maybe a little bit san diegans are more prepared for this time around i know my backyard was for sure like, like we're, what, doing, we're doing it right. Like, what'd you do different? I mean, I know your backyard. How do you prevent water from coming over that massive hill? So basically a bunch of shit came down from that hill um, and it would clog and it just backed up against my fence. So water just, the way water would normally flow in my backyard, it's directed to go in the corner away from the trap. The but, yeah. but because of all this shit that was clogged, it was basically bouncing around and hitting like my patio down to the trap. And that's, and it was getting, and it was stopping in the trap. It was gathering water from there. Um, so I was able to, you know, for now, because I'm I'm getting my backyard done and there's going to be like French drains. We're getting a bunch of work done and whatnot. Yeah. So for now, I was able to dig, like, dig, get all that shit out, clear a bunch of passageways for water to flow through. And water hasn't even came fucking close this time. Mm -hmm. It was just, it was just the way I wasn't prepared. And I don't think anyone really, anyone really was because it's just, you know, it's a lot, bro, but doing all right. Thank God, man. But, well, good, 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 good. I'm glad to hear it. And is Marshall, it, 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 Marshall, you look much better. Thank is you. that better? Did that yes. fix it? Yes, dude. Hey. And honestly, okay. don't don't give us an attitude about it, buddy. We're helping you out. All right. <laughs> he doesn't even come on for the sound check. Yeah, the I was on for the sound check. The nerve of this no. guy's sound check. He's like, I don't, you know, I don't have time to be wasting. And I'm like, yeah, but you, you don't have time to take off your fucking Wi-Fi either for a clear video. Um, <laughs> But anyways, okay, Marshall, how you doing, buddy? I'm, now that we can I'm see doing great. Face, now that we can see your face, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing excellent. How doing really you? good. You know, um, since we have Marshall here and, and we're in a chat, uh, MJ Marshall and I and Gary and a couple other people, and we're talking about T-shirts today, right? Marshall, I guess, is going to dust the cobwebs off of the T-shirt machine and maybe cut – come into the 21st century and get some t-shirts made right is that true yeah yeah maybe okay i'm well, thinking i'm thinking about it i'm looking forward to it but i'll tell you when you get the t-shirts made don't forget the shoes baby <laughs> don't forget the shoes <laughs> hey hey marshall, a marshall treats his merch like his fucking condo projects once every five years bro that's right that's right. Oh my god! I, but by the way, let us know when you drop that merch because I, I definitely need more of it. I, I bring back that green. You know that color green you had out that that uh, that dark forest green. Yeah. You need to you just come out with the same old shit, bro. That shit was hot. No, I got I got to change it up. I got to change it up. Still gonna do the velvet koozies though. So <laughs> those were a hit. All right, real quick. All right, we've already kind of discussed about what you guys know about tonight's guest. And uh, respectfully minimal. You guys don't know too much about the homie Vince. Um, I've known this guy since I came in, but I could have sworn this dude was wet behind the ears like me because he doesn't act. He's not cocky. He doesn't put himself out there a lot. Like he acts pretty shy, if you ask me. Now that I met the guy, he doesn't, not really shy at all, but just doesn't act like a typical long, like a, been around a long time type keeper, right? But I do have someone who knows the guy probably a lot better than I do, and specifically hitting me up, asking me if he could drop the intro on tonight's guest. Any guess on who tonight, who that is? Gary. It's got to be Gary. 
It's got to be Gary. It's got to be Patrick Holmes is what it's got to oh. be. Oh. It's not Gary because Gary <laughs> Gary doesn't come to this channel for some reason. I'm just kidding. Patrick Holmes, what's good, buddy? Thank you for being here. What's happening? What's up? I, what's up, I Patrick? Just, what's going on, guys? I really just struggled right now to fight off the urge to come in with a hardcore Jersey accent saying that I was Gary. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'll let you guys make it on that. Um, oh, buddy. So, what's going on, man? Hey, congrats on your clutch, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I look, I, 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 know, I know this show is not about me tonight, but just real quick, I'll just show you guys since they're right behind me. Nice. Oh. Uh, Always a nice Blaze. sight. Look at the yellow ones, dude. Look Don't ever. Blaze. Yeah, Blaze. Yeah, there's a. Uh, I've got six yellows and four reds, and this is the only clutch I've ever had where I was happy about a high yellow ratio. <laughs> <laughs> wow! And, and, and can you describe the pairing, like the the background on that? That um, yeah, it, it's um. There's there's super mutts. Um, there's a lot, a lot in the pedigree, but it has literally every ingredient that anybody has ever used for good high yellow stuff in the United States is in this pedigree. The, the it's really special to me and I won't take too much time on it. Um, the, the, um, mom's pedigree is insanely deep. Um, dad is the super high yellow lemon tree line male that forest produced that, um, yeah, that Des and Steven said to me, all y'all know who this animal, he, he used to take him to Tinley, and uh, he's top, easy, easy top five, maybe top three high yellows in the U alive in the U.S. right now. To my knowledge, he's the only animal in the U.S. with this much lemon tree blood that shows the lemon tree phenotype. He has the classic nice. lemon tree blood. I forgot that snake was still around, bro. I'm not even joking. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've, got, I've got him. Um, Des and Steven sent him to me. And um, so obviously really special to me, not only because Forrest produced him, it was Forrest's only clutch of Condros, he, and, and, and he was the number one in the clutch, hands down. But there's also signal herp lineage in his pedigree. So Brooke Bernstein produced his dad, um, Lemon Tree Bioc, from the pure lemon pairing that the, that the Stewarts did. And then um, Rico produced his mom by breeding a Kofiow, a Canary Kofiow, to a Kofiow Bioc that Rico also produced. So we've got Lemon Tree Bioc times Kofiow, Kofiow Bioc on, from dad. Mom, I could talk all night about her pedigree, but in short, her sire is Walsh Blue times Kofiow Bioc, and her dam is, was listed as OS High Yellow times Kofiow Bioc. The Walsh Blue on dad's her dad's side comes from Terry Phillip uh, Blue Blood, uh, which is not really around anymore. And the high yellow blood on mom's side is a lot deeper than I thought after studying the pedigree. It's not just OS. She has lemon tree and old yellow, old yeller blood. So lemon tree, old yeller, and OS high yellow, all the like best stuff you could hope for. Um, so, so lemon tree on um, that's a real important clutch. What you just got right now. Great. Yeah, yeah, with That's lemon awesome, tree man. on both sides of the pedigree. It's really awesome. And this is a clutch where I think the yellows are are just as cool and just as valuable as the reds are because of their potential. All right, let's not pull away from the guest tonight. What 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 do you yeah. what do you have to say about the homie Vincent from VC Reptiles? Um, because I'm very shocked to find out that he's been around for a minute. Um, and, and like I said, he's a really laid back, cool guy, doesn't act like he's been around for a long time. So what do you have to say on that, Patrick? That's right. So I've known Vinny for a, a really long time um, from the MVF days. And Marshall, you, you do too. He was Sour Diesel on the MVF. Oh, Bill, you might remember wow. that too. No, I, I definitely remember that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So remember he had like a really awesome Matrix phase animal and he had a um, like an 05188 shade male and just he had some really, really cool shit back in the day. Um, and uh, so... Um, and he'll, I'll let, you know, he'll, he can speak more on his old collection and, and what happened with all of that. But he, he was active on the MVF, always super cool back then. He was, he had the same kind of attitude back then. He was there, he had some nice animals, but he was laid back. And uh, so a few years ago, he reached out to me and told me 
who he was, his MVF handle. And I was like, oh, shit, dude. Because, I, you know, I was gone for a few years and I hadn't talked to him. And uh, he told me he was thinking about getting back into it. And um, Bill, remember the other day you you um, misheard what I said about selling a, a cheap designer baby on that video? And you, you remember you reached out to me about yeah. the. Uh, yeah. And so <laughs> this is what I was referring to. Um, I, I sold Vinny a animal from my first crook clutch. So the uh, clutch mates, a Hellboy and the void and all those animals. And I gave him a really good deal on it. And it was one that somebody else had backed out on very stupidly. Now that we see what it turned into and I'll, I'll let him talk about that and show it off. But that, that was kind of helping him kick off his collection, getting back into it. Um, and I introduced him to a few other guys and I kind of told him who was in the game that was doing this or that. And, uh, he started building this collection and it's really impressive. He has an amazing collection, but the thing that I would like to mention is his fucking setup. This yeah. dude's setup is unfucking believable. Um, by anybody's standards, top three arboreal rooms in the country and, and my personal favorite, um, everything about all of his setups to me, logistically and, um, and practically speaking are perfect. Like the only things that I, like if it was my setup, the only things that I would change are aesthetic things. Like I like black cages over white cages or certain, like, yeah, certain and types they, of, they have, of look, those whites hit different bro like uh, they all, look so good all right white it, room like that you don't see that a lot a lot it, it's it's it, fucking crispy bro it looks so good and he uses all these live plants he's a he's this dude is a hardcore plant keeper he's addicted to house plants that's one of the things that that um why he and i hit it off but it's not just chondros he's got dominican boas and uh, Amazon tree boas and rough scale pythons and some of the best Amazon tree boas in the country. He has one of the best red collections there is. And, um, I, it, it's, I think it's really badass. Like I feel honored to have a snake that I produced in a, a room like that. And I'm, I'm not exaggerating when I say it's literally my favorite arboreal room in the country. And the, the, um, second one being Socrates, his room is, is fucking ridiculous too. And really, the, the, the big thing with Vince, um, the thing I love about Vinny's stuff is his the elevated plants and the, t the, the types of plants that he uses, everything about it. Um, and he'll go into detail about why he does what he does with the different species. But they're just perfect enclosures, and it looks ridiculous. And it has been really, really badass to me to watch him come back in and start buying babies and then buy a big house and become a father and start putting together this just unbelievable, unbelievable room and unbelievable collection. Um, and beyond that, uh, just a little bit about him. Uh, he has done, a, these are just things that you could be asking him about. He's done a lot of traveling. I want to say he's been to Costa Rica five times. Um, he is an nice. amazing, amazing photographer. The dude is a ridiculous photographer. And his old personal Instagram is not active right now, but he told me eventually he'll probably reactivate it. It has all these amazing travel photos, waterfalls from all over the world. And the, the dude is just, like I say, he's really badass, done a lot of shit, been around for a long time and super humble about it. You, a lot of people, he's very underrated. A lot of people don't know who he is, doesn't have a huge following, but his setup is unbelievable his animals are immaculately healthy couldn't say more good things about him i, I love this dude he's amazing well there you yeah. have it what an intro a lot of nice yeah getting a lot of people on the live chat that just uh are confirming what you're saying patrick yeah, yeah. all right yep. now, patrick, would you also agree it's that time to get your mind right and to stay hydrated for everyone who's ready for this show to get going or what <laughs> get your mind right stay hydrated all right. Well, listen, Patrick, thank you so much for hanging out and uh, enjoy the rest of your night. And uh, everyone, you heard him from the man, Patrick Holmes. It is game time. Episode 449 with the homie Vincent from VC Reptiles. Let's go. Cheers. Good.
You ready for do do more in the future? Trap yes. talk podcasts? Yes. Man. Only, only trap talk. Exclusive. Yes. Exclusive. Exclusive. <laughs> oh. So stop calling us. <laughs> <laughs> From the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the crop, God love it, love it, and not them. Hop from the hop to the club to spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the club to spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the club to spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the club to spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the everybody, we do it. Everybody, we do it. episode 449 with hey yo Vinny. yo what's going on guys what's well, good buddy what's, nice. what's nice happening you guys finally yeah, man, man. What's, what's, man? what's going on guys how you guys doing that's good to see you yeah you're doing know, great hey, no one's got an intro like that from from patrick no Holland. yeah God, patrick is one of the best people i've ever met man he, he's helped me out so much in this hobby i have so much i owe to him he's such a great guy man everything yeah. about him i mean he's so knowledgeable he's just kind he's just just a very big heart you know well, I, I will say everything you said was on point and well deserved, my man, because I remember you from the very start of me collecting Green Tree Pythons. But the way you would ask questions, you you you, don't, you just don't come off as someone who's been doing this for a long time. Um, so I will say that you know I've been asking for come on the show I think for over two years now, right? And you you're, you're yeah. just like not yet, MJ. But when I'm ready, yeah. I'll let you know, right? But dude, shout out for you being such a humble guy, really laid back and chill. But it's kind of a trip, I would say, to have you been like you've seen different like waves and movements within the Condro community. I'm oh sure. yeah, it's so many changes, man. It's it's like a whole other game right now, you know. Yeah, and 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 it does make sense on why your room the way your room is the way it is because I feel like someone who just comes in with the next five years, like unless they have a friend helping them out, they just don't know how to set a room up like that, bro. So it seems like it seems like you've been mastering and like kind of like manifesting that room for a while i would say you know i've been thinking about this room for over a decade man ever since I, I i got out of the hobby i was looking to get back in i'm like when i get back in i'm gonna do it right i'm gonna wait till i i'm settled down in life i'm not going out anymore i i'm gonna save it for when i want to be home in my house you know yeah i'm raising a family now it's the perfect time to just set everything up and go soup to nuts and just you know do it the right way you know you want to you want to have functionality in your room you want to be able to be in your room and cleaning snake shit isn't a fucking hassle, you know? It, no. It's smooth. Right. You know? just want things to flow. So I just I just want everything to be functional, everything to be uh, aesthetically pleasing. You know, when people walk in, I don't want to see, you know, glass tanks with smeared shit on the sides and fucking dome, dome lights on top. You know what I mean? Right. Fucking uh, exposed beams and shit. So that, I, I grew up uh, in a basement downstairs in the, in the reptile facility where I worked, and it's just like a... I just wanted everything to match and just look like, you know, a zoo. I know. You, you, and you went to the extreme getting those potted plants that all match the same, right? Or, cause... Yeah. yeah I'm a, I actually had to hustle the lady the other day because they're like, uh, I bought 12. And she's like, you can't buy any more. She's like, we need – she's like, you could only take four more. I'm like, but they all got a match. I need six. And right. she's like, I can give them extra money. <laughs> they sell them to me on, on the side. No oh, man, it, it, let's, I want to say this real quick because I already know how much time and effort you probably put into that room day in day out. So shout to the wives, shout to your wife, all right, uh, who, who puts up no with people like man. us, man. Like I know, dude, I know my wife comes in and asks me, "Are you ready yet? Like, can we have dinner?" And I'm like, "Dude, I got like another hour." So I do want to say shout to the wives out yeah. there, shout to your wife for being a uh, super just supportive man. Like she was super stoked. To have she's you a rock star, man. She's 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 my rock. She's the one who encouraged me to go crazy like i was like when i first got back into it i don't want to be selfish you know right with the taking up all the space you know with the garage the i took up the boiler washer room the spare bedroom but it was all, all her idea believe it or not 
Right. I'm like, I love this woman. She is probably the best thing that's ever happened to me in my life. I'll say it right now. So you, Patrick, <laughs> Patrick said you went by a username called Sour Diesel back in the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One I remember time. that. 100 percent remember that. Yeah, yeah, Marshall. I bought a. I remember actually. I was probably a teenager. I remember seeing you at a one of the Condra coalitions. I bought a, a Tony Nikolai high yellow. So nice. Cross to a buyout. Yeah, that was yeah. my that was my first uh, first. Oh, okay, okay. Cross to a cross to a biac. Nice. I think I think oh yeah oh it was oh uh oh eight thirteen I think it was mm oh eight thirteen. That's awesome. Yeah, a little female. I bought a few in person at the Daytona show. It was uh, so many memories going back, man. That was a uh, oh yeah twenty years ago. That's epic. <laughs> Crazy, right? That's amazing. Yeah, it makes you <laughs> makes me feel old. So what? <laughs> yeah, it makes older. Sense. Yeah, 20 older. Years ago, Marshall, Twenty years ago, Marshall, what you you were in your forties then. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, yeah, man, it was coming in hot. Nah, yeah, he is. Line, man. You, you haven't aged much since then. You still look the same. Uh, I don't know about that, but he yeah, looks better but, now. Bro, he was doing. He was a big yeah. boy. He had some weight on him a few years ago, and <laughs> and, when I, and when I see you, Marshall, with the goat, when you had a goatee and all that. Bro, you you definitely look way better now than you did back then, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, I've lost I've lost right. a couple couple a couple movie. pounds since then. All that Miller Lite like keeping you young. All that no, it's all the fish concerts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, man, those, those are the days you had. The, you had the Condra Coalition in the back corner and the Daytona shows. Yeah, and then there was the one year you guys were kind of like in the center. So yes, so, so, yeah. yep, so, that was. So Vincent, sorry, Kev. No, no, I was gonna say. So Vincent, you, 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 you were in it, and then you left. Can we talk talk about that? Like, you know, because I remember, just obviously, we're talking about you having a username. You had Condros being paired up in like 2010 and whatnot, and then you kind of like chilled for a little bit, or were you always in it yeah. and just didn't? I mean, post I could go, I could go even further back. I mean, when yeah, I was uh, <clears throat> when I was like a kid, my I was about like, you know, when I was a, a small child, five, six, seven, my. Uh, neighbor would babysit me and her older son actually had a green tree python in his bedroom in a big glass hexagon tank i remember being like five or six years old so he had a big aru and he had a in his room he had like all tubs we had all colubrids you know what i mean just one green tree python and i fell in love with it you know it was the old school hexagon tank with the waterfall and the, and the plastic plant you know nice. everything there works the screen top the the silver dome and uh he actually got a pair he ended up getting a pair and he bred them so uh, in the future, he was friends with, I don't know if you guys remember the Gorman brothers, uh, Jimmy and Danny Gorman. I remember, I remember the name for sure. Yeah, so Danny Gorman got really big because he was in the, one of the first people in the U.S. to be super successful with Praisness, with Varanus Praisness, the, the Emerald Tree Monitors. So he had the whole spread in Reptiles Magazine. He was very successful. And uh, Duncan McRae at the time, this is before he even um, – they even discovered the blue tree monitor and all that. He was over in Bali, Indonesia with uh, CV Herptofauna. So he uh, asked Danny to come over and help him breed uh, green tree monitors at the time. So he gave him some tips and he stayed with him for a couple of weeks. And then I guess he ended up going home. And within a month later, Duncan asked Danny if he'd like to stay with him and live over there. So for the next 26 plus years, he was living over there, you know, helping with all of that. And then we started uh, sponsoring duncan and witty and all them to go to different islands like Bataan and all those places and that's when they discovered in the early 2000s the varanus mccrayi i think it was a uh, varanus malinus and varanus uh boimai i think so they discovered those three and then they set up a whole operation where they started uh different collectors and stuff on the mainland where um of indonesia were picking up all different um <clears throat> green tree pythons so what they did is uh his brother back home, Jimmy Gorman, was uh, working with a lot of blackhead pythons and other different types of berms and boas and stuff like that. So he was, uh, they ended up opening a shop on Long Island called DJ Reptiles. And they started importing, exporting everything. And Danny made connections with uh, Quetzal in um, Costa Rica and people in Ethiopia. So they were importing everything. And at the time, I, that was the late 90s, early 2000s. So I think I was like, I was only about like 10, 11 years old. And I started working in the shop that they opened. And I remember it was just a bear shop and we're painting the walls green. We're setting up uh, all melamine shelves and they put just glass. Because PVC wasn't a thing back then. No one used PVC. I think people were starting to, you know, mess around with acrylic. 
but no, yeah. nothing, no, yeah, no one was using PVC, you know? It's all wood. So, yeah, yeah wood. Like wood plywood. Doing it and shit, just wood, yeah. So we opened up the retail shop, and downstairs was like the facility. The upstairs was all retail. So we had just 10 gallon tanks just lined up, all 10 gallon tanks with screen tops, and we cut pieces of plexiglass and we put them on top to keep the humidity in. So we were doing that for a while. And I think we brought in, I mean, I say we, but it was really them. I was a kid working there, but they brought in a couple hundred chondros at the time. And they when, were, uh, when was this? How, this how was, long ago uh, was this? This was probably like 2005, 2006, 2007. They started, that's when they, after a couple of years of living over there, they set up the operation. And that's when they were bringing over all the animals. The shop itself, DJ Reptiles, they opened up like 97, 98, but they weren't bringing in that type of stuff till the early 2000s. So, oh, wait, how young were you? How young were you when you first started hanging out over there and whatnot? Oh, I was 10 years old because it was my neighbor's, oh, wow. it was my, my, my babysitter's son opened the shop with the two brothers. So it was three friends. So they opened old. it. And like, you know, I was at, the, I was at his house every day. And as he got older, he, uh, when he opened the shop, he asked me to come, you know, I asked if I could work over there. So he let me come and, you know, they didn't pay me the, for the first several years, but <laughs> I didn't care. I would have given you shits about money as a kid then. Yeah, like, <laughs> I didn't care. No, yeah. After school, instead of joining sports, I'm going to clean snake shit. I didn't care, man. I was working with, they had every species under the sun. I mean, everything that, that you could think of, you name, they, they were bringing in at one point or another. It was, I mean, it was, if I, if I had access like I did now, I mean, you know, back then, like I did, like uh, if I had access now, like I did back then, the the things that we had were just unbelievable. You know, it was it was crazy, and the prices were so drastically different. Yeah. And, uh, Whatever happened with that, Vince? So at the time, they were uh, they were selling a lot of they went to Daytona. I think it was two thousand six, two thousand seven, and they were selling a ton of the uh, the Highland stuff. So we didn't bring in any lowland animals. We brought in. They started describing all the micro localities in Indonesia. So you got Bucandini, Manaquare, Lear, Jaya, all those things. And then it was a lot of, at the time, it was a, a lot of controversy over it. A lot of people saying, you can't, you know, you can't def definitely say where it comes from. And these micro localities aren't really a true thing. And Cameron Pedalin at the time was even saying like, you know, it's, it's bullshit. You know, they don't exist. But all these gorges and valleys and different types of, uh, you know, terrain where animals can't, where it isolates certain animals, you know, it, it's really, it's still really up to debate, like what's what, you know, you, you never really know at the yeah. end of the day. But I, I do believe that there's, there are a lot of highland localities and they, they do exist and they have different colors and tones and you like, you guys know they're red dominant, a lot of them. And uh, at the time, I remember at the end, no one bought them for the for, for two days. Then at the end of the show, uh, Sunday at Daytona, we're cleaning up. And I think, uh, who came over? Freaking uh, Nerd, Mark Twig, um, Trooper may have bought some. I don't know if he did or not, but he was coming over looking at them and talking about them. Um, who else? I know Prada's Wamina, Stardust Wamina line came from us. Um, some of Joe Vinsky's uh, Monaquare uh, Blue line came from us. Oh. Wow. That's, this is, that's this is deep, crazy. That's deep history, man. Yeah, I, it, totally. It, but it, it was funny because um, at the time, you know, they weren't, you know, Jimmy and Danny, they weren't, they weren't in the chondro community. So when they started bringing these animals in, a lot of the big chondro guys were kind of like annoyed, and you know. Yeah, but it, I remember there being a lot of a lot of uh, pushback on on oh, yeah, like all the all the open. all the localities, and they were you know, people thought it was. Whoa, there we go. <laughs> Man down. Hey, uh, hey, 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 sorry for my friend Marshall, man. I apologize. Yeah, it happens at least once a show. Um, but yeah, there were uh, you know people saying that um, you never, you, you couldn't be, you couldn't tell for sure because you know you only know where they're being exported from, and unless you collected it yourself, I mean there there was all kind of uh, arguments against uh, you know people yeah. trying to make it out like it was a marketing ploy more than anything else. Yeah, no, exactly. There was a lot of pushback. A lot, a lot of people just straight up said bullshit. You know, I don't, I don't care what they say. It's bullshit. But then you see a, a couple of years later, you know, the Bushmaster, Cameron, them, they started using the same localities. Now they do to this day. You know. Yeah, so. you know, it's it's all it, at the end of the day, it does come down to marketing and money, and that's yeah. why some yeah. of this shit, some of this shit will stick when it shouldn't. And then vice versa, you know, but 
I mean, but for you to kind of see the birth of all this shit is fucking gnarly. Yeah, man. yeah. You were I so mean, young. You know what I mean? I was I was 12 years old, and I remember working there for almost two years, and that that was like a a big deal. Is when one of the shipments came in, they came over with like a like a yearling red uh, bucandini, and and I remember Danny Gorman coming over and picking it up and coming over to me and saying like this is a nice animal you know you really you like this animal i'm like yeah i love it so awesome man he's like, he's like this is this is you this is a gift for you and i was like i was ecstatic man that was it my ever wow. since then whatever i could get from the shop you know i had like i couldn't afford anything i'm a child at the time but we would have people come in that irresponsibly bought like a whole like a, a wild caught one or something they couldn't get the baby to feed or whatever and you would be surprised back then people would come and say like uh, if you could get this to live you could keep it they still no, do that. Now. They still do that now, bro. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like shit, man. I'm like, I'll fucking take this. I'll, I'll shove fucking pinkies down his throat or whatever I gotta do as a kid. It's free. I'll take it. Yeah. And at least two of my uh, two of my females ended up coming. I obtained them through that through that way. So, and they ended up being like nice big animals. One of them was an OS high yellow line animal. She wasn't documented, but when she aged, you could see she was just a very very light green with so much pure sunflower yellow coming all the way up almost to the top she just had the green down the back you know right very nice animal just i just had the animals i had were just a caliber above like even what i have now i think you know can you walk us even, through this pairing right here um vinny because i know this is back in the day is 2012 that was, right? that's uh tony montana hillary webb female right there that's one that's, of Marshall. that's that's wow. uh that's, that's the that's sickness. Jaeger. Sickness. So yeah. Head, head. yeah, that's Jaeger. That's Jaeger's parents, right? There. Jaeger. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. right. That's Whoa, right. Whoa, are you kidding me? This is yeah. Jaeger's parents. Yeah. yeah. So that that male, the head, the head in the picture is the male. That's uh S H O five one eight eight to S H O five O eight six or something like that. So mm. yeah. So yeah, that was just that's super right. high black blue potential. You know, I I was. And I had all these clutches going around 2011, 2000, I mean, uh, pairings going around 2011, 2012. And I was die hard into it, man. I was, I was buying stuff from everyone. I actually got that female from, uh, Dr. Barry Manson. Do you remember him? Yeah, I do yeah. very well. Yeah. So he, he like actually like reached, like I was, I put out a post saying I'm looking for more females and he reached out to me and he helped broker a couple of deals for me and he was getting me some good animals at the time so Dude. that car carpet man queen uh angel angel oz i had a um, angel queen too i had a uh, i had do you guys remember um troy france at all he had a in 07 he produced a beautiful high yellow clutch of a. Uh, it was bayak maruk they, that's all it was just a bayak maruk just a uh, one time you know outcross and a. Uh, they produced almost every animal in the litter was super high yellow. They looked like lemon tree, like pixelated, like individual scales green, not like a wash, you know? Mm. And that was beautiful. I had one of those. Just, uh, yeah, the whole collection was great. But my problem at the time was you're, you're not thinking like all these high-end guys. You know, it's, it's early 2000s. You're not thinking of like diseases or, you know, sicknesses or illnesses. You're just, you're not, I wasn't quarantine, quarantining shit. You know what I mean? I didn't have any type of procedure. I'm like, I got, I got a three thousand dollar animal from this guy whose collection I, I worship. I'm like, why would I ever, you know, uh, quarantine that? You know, I didn't even think about it at the time. You know, you only think about it with uh, the wild caught. You're bringing them in. You're panicure, flagell. You're doing all that bullshit. But with the the high end stuff, you're not. You weren't. No one was doing that back then. No, you know? no, Vinny. You you mentioned Barry. Well, during ICAST, did you go to ICAST? Mm -mm. No. See, no, ICAST was like my very first Condor event, and Barry was a great guy. Very yeah. like had great hospitality. In fact, I spent a day or two before ICAST with Barry, and I stayed at his house. You know, I went to his house, and he had unbelievable animals, but he had so much stuff in and out. I mean, yeah. it was like a fucking revolving door. Yeah, like a lot of a lot of people blame the Nido uh, epidemic on on you know not going to say only Barry, but uh, the fact that he was having all these animals out on loan and here and there and moving them around. Bro, I lost every an, I lost every animal. Yeah, whoa, within okay. like within like a two three month uh, range. I I could I was like having like panic attacks. I'd come in, I'd have snakes with bubbles, snakes one snake's laying on the floor, one snake's limp. 
on the fucking branch wheezing. I'm like, shit. So all this, like, all this happened. With this, this all happened in a two month span. They all started going out. I, I would say realistically, I'm being exaggerated. I would say within a six month span, I lost almost everything. I think what I had left was like a Maruk, like like basic shit that I didn't even want. You know, all my high end stuff was was done because I was I was just pairing everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was just I was and that one time, uh, <clears throat> I got eggs from a lot of those clutch from those pairings, but. At, during that time of that year when I was I was pairing in like you know November December January <clears throat> and uh, I got into a really bad car accident I ended up uh, flipping my truck a couple of times going like 75 miles an hour so oh, I got a little compartment syndrome on my arm I got I, I almost lost my arm my leg was all messed up so I ended up uh, getting a fasciotomy I was in the hospital for weeks on end you know I was on oh, a damn yeah it was a really fucked up time in my life and then you know I got out and I'm like I'm bed bound and like, uh, <clears throat> it was just even to get up to, to clean the room, you know, the remaining animals that I still have for my collection was just like a pain in the ass. And, uh, yeah. you know, just, uh, after the accident and then losing all the animals, everything, all it happened like kind of all at once, you know, and it was just like a, and then at the same time, I lost one of my good friends to, uh, overdose and it was just a really tough time in my life. And I, <clears throat> I guess I, I was only 24, 25 years old, and I, I really didn't want to be home anymore. You know, I, I had hardly any of my collection left. I lost all my high-end animals. I had, like, two or three fucking bullshit import animals left that I don't really care about. You know, uh, I just wanted to get out. I wanted to, to go out. I ended up partying, freaking uh, traveling all over, a lot of backcountry hiking and camping in other countries and other states and shit like that. Like, a lot of mountain climbing and stuff. Went, did a 80-mile trek in Peru. Uh, Cordillera Y wash with just my one friend, man. We've taken buses and all these things. And you, you, you can't you can't do that with a big condor collection at home. No, right? you can't do anything. That's why I said to myself, I said, you know, keep keep the cages, keep that all the equipment. It's it's your passion. You're gonna you're gonna fall back into it. It's not gone forever. This isn't this isn't just some one time thing. This is this is like it's it's with part of me, you know what I mean? So I like I had all these cages in my room. It's funny because uh that was the first time I got my um, PVC cages with Larry Stroud. I don't know if you guys remember him at all. Mm -hmm. from I thought it was Jim uh, Jim Shalhorn or. Well, he he was I he was making cages too, but this is uh Larry Stroud was just the guy on the MVF, and he was making them in his garage. Uh, and they they're beautiful. They look like the old school. Uh, I think AP cages. I forgot which ones, but they got the nice black plastic hinges and. He made my first PVC cages, and after that, my husband tree, like, that's when I really stepped it up, you know? I think that was 2004, I picked up four cages, and then 2007, I picked up another four cages. <clears throat> Vincent, so what to... year, wait, I'm sorry, let me cut you off, but what year was it when your animal started crashing? Oh, uh, that was probably like 2013, 2000, around there. Okay, and did you determine if it was a, like a most recent addition that did, that, that made that happen, or did you determine the animal that really wiped everything out or or did it no it I, I i had no idea man i don't know i to this day i have no idea which animal it was so, i just i lost so many animals so quick and i'm still like i don't 100 percent know if it was nido because I, I never really tested anything back then but like you know even looking back like it didn't really seem too much like a like fully respiratory either it seemed like a lot of my snakes were kind of going limp too so not perching right yeah, like they were just like they were just like they their tongues would be flicking, and some of them some of them were experiencing you know the bubbles and the wheezing, and you know it's a typical respiratory. You know, I'll try to hit them up with like four taz or something like that, cook right. it out of them. Right. But um, it's like some of them were just like I pick them up and they they would literally be limp. Yeah, but their tongues would be flicking. I they just be limp. I'm like, and I'm like, this this snake's dead. I think that's, like, that's night. That's Nido, man. Is it? Yeah. So I figured, I'm like, because I was confused. I'm like, you know, NIDO is a, really a respiratory, but I'm like, now they're all acting like some of them have like neurological issues almost, you know? Yeah. So, and that, like, you know, when I see the snake like that, the, the eyes are clear, whatever, it's tongues flicking, but the body's limp like that. Yeah. I'm like, uh, this snake's not coming back. He's done. I'm yeah. like, this fucking sucks, you know? So that was like, a, it's like a slap in the face, all that. And then, you know, coming back into the, into the hobby, over 10 years later, I'm looking at these prices and these bloodlines and everything's changed. And I'm like, holy shit, man. The fuck? <laughs> I really shot that, myself in the foot and letting that collection go, you know? That happened to a lot of people at that time. I, I say a lot. I mean, I could think of three or four uh, no, uh, no, people. More so. a, a lot is the right term. 
Okay, I'm yeah. A, lo a lot of people who lost everything in a very short period of time. Like, they were here, and they were, like, one of the bigger names in... And, you know, associated with the species, and then nobody's ever heard from them again. They're just gone, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's all about that same time frame. That type of collection. All about the same time frame, Benny. You know, yeah. 2000, you know, mid 2000, 2010, you know, yeah. 2013, all that stuff. You know. Yeah, it was, it was devastating, man. And I didn't really have an answer. And, you know, at the time, also, you're, when you don't know and you don't know, it wasn't spoken about either, you know, so you, you feel alone in this yeah. situation. So I'm a young guy and, you know, some of these guys are in their 30s, 40s, 50s. I'm like, you know, I'm 22, 23, 24, buying all these snakes, you know, doing what I can. And when I lost them, I almost didn't even want to talk about it. You know, I kind of just wanted wow. to disappear and I could understand how people feel because nobody else was talking about it. So you feel, did I do something wrong? Did I, did I kill all these animals? Like, I feel like an idiot, you know? Yeah. So, and you just, you kind of just walk away, you know? Yeah, but but when in doubt, actually talking about it helps. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah. But nobody knows back, especially back then. Like yeah. it was like a fucking hidden secret until yeah. I, want, I want to say until the podcast started cracking off is when really people were just openly discussing their Nido experience and what they did to basically never make that happen again. And and, and what it comes down to is just having a closed off collection. Um, yeah. from, from what I'm hearing of, of, of a bunch of OGs in the game that are in this now, they, they don't add shit to their fucking collection no more. It is closed yeah. off, and that's what it is. Correct me if I'm wrong, Bill and Marshall, but you guys, what the fuck are you guys really adding? Unless it's from, like, Mark. Nothing. I, I, haven't, I haven't bought a new Chondro in here in uh, 10 years, probably, at least, if not yeah, longer. I, 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 I add stuff. Yeah, I do. I add stuff. Not, not a lot, but I'll add a piece or two every year. Um but it seems like that big, the big crack, you know, if you want to call it the crash that happened uh, back that you're talking about, Vince, is for whatever reason, and I think I know a lot of the reasons, it's just the collections aren't as susceptible to that anymore. I think a lot of it is NATO testing, and I think mm -hmm. a lot of it is um, just improved husbandry techniques. Like, mm -hmm. I do things a lot different now. Like, I never used to wipe tongs or clean tongs in between feedings, right? Or yeah, yeah. Or you take a rodent and like one one animal would would strike at it but wouldn't take it, and then you yeah. right along to the next one, right? Yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. yeah. You don't want to go out a rat; it's fucking a dollar. I'm not. I'm not yeah, dollar. right. I mean, so, <laughs> so a lot of stuff like that has changed, and um, so yeah, I bring stuff in, but I'm just super. Uh, I'm just careful when I bring it in, you know. I mean, yeah. Well, I've I noticed. I've noticed it's better off. To, you're better off buying neos too when you start yeah. buying. Oh yeah. Dollars. yeah. No and doubt. You start asking yourself, like, why did this person sell this adult female? Like, yeah. this person's still breeding; they're still working with their collection. Why did they sell me this big, beautiful female? Because it's probably doing shit for them. It's not breeding for them. It's get maybe sick or whatever. You know, you got to ask yourself the logical questions. Like, why would this person who's not getting out of the hobby sell me this breeder female? You know, it's just like a lot of things. Sometimes, it, it, when you look in between in between the lines, you could see the answer. You know. I, I will say this though, like if I, like if there was a basin type switch situation, I'm for sure gonna fucking give away something like that. If if yeah. if, if if the opportunity is like that, it all depends, right? Yeah. But for yeah. the most part, that's like that's a blue moon. Like it's not it's not a typical situation for someone to let go of a fucking female green tree python. That's definitely like a huge like check into that and see why that even is. You know, yeah. what I mean? you don't it's want. Just, to uh, it's just I just find you don't have as much luck when you. When you acquire other people's adult animals, and I know you guys have talked about that a few times before many, yourself, many times, many, so, many times. There's yeah. something about it. I don't, I don't know what it is, you know. And I, I made the same mistakes all over again because when I first got into it, I did buy a, a nice uh, Kim Burge. I think it's um, uh, what is it? The flower, one of one of her high yellow uh, lines from back in the day, you know, from Country Condros or whatever. And uh, yeah. it's. It's a 2014 animal, and I've paired her the past three years in a row. And I don't know if the males they they don't see her, they don't acknowledge her. I don't know what it is. But then I got two imports. They're locking up. They're ovulating. It's with the same males. I I, I couldn't tell you what it is. I don't know. Now I, I do want to get to a super chat question, uh, and it's relating to like a locality uh, question. And, and I'm curious back back when you were first getting groomed and were you really geeking out over localities back then or were you just looking at visually what was coming in and not even asking those kind of questions i was curious, I, I'm curious uh, you know what it is it's like back then 
I don't think like visually to me, all the localities, uh, they all kind of, not that they all look the same, the Highland ones, but when we were bringing in the Highland stuff, it was, uh, you know, you'd have a Bucandini that looked like a Manaquare, and then you'd have a Cyclops that looked like, you know, uh, a, a Lear sometimes or some shit like that. They were just, it was just different, you know what I mean? It, the yeah. animals looked a lot different than they do now, too. Like, every time you saw a Sarong, back then it was a yellow Neo. We weren't getting any reds. It was all yellows, and you were getting solid stripe almost every time down the back. You know, you don't you don't really see that too much anymore. Like the nice clean ones, you know. Right. Uh, the Aru's looked great. Everything was just different. Um, I really wasn't geeking out too much because I was really obsessed over the fact that this is the first time I was seeing like Might Phase in like the OCC. So like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was seeing like all these red babies going through like heavy Might Phase, and I think I just focused more on like, wow, I want that, you know, because it was different at the time. You really didn't see it, and even though a lot of them would lose it. It was just something that caught my eye. I couldn't, yeah, something new, different. Yeah, it was something new. You know, it was that dark. It was getting, it was all peppered and might phase and getting going through a dark stage. And then, you know, the blue undertones. It was, I really liked the Highland stuff back then, you know, the stuff that I can't afford or get right now, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to ask what Lucas is uh, super chatting about. And I, I'm trying to read it and see if it makes sense. But uh, he says, I was told by an importer that there are no chondros on, on Wamania but that many Highlands flew out from there. Is this true? Uh, I'm not I'm not 100% sure if that's true or not. I, I do know there's a lot of, you know, like Marshall and me talked before, like uh, everyone was pushing back. And still to this day, there's a lot of discrepancy. I don't think anyone really, you don't really know where it came from at the end of the day. I mean, you, I follow all these these exporters that are in Indonesia right now. They're, they're constantly offering me stuff in, uh, on Facebook. And, you know, you see how some of these people keep these things. I mean, they're in freaking Coke water bottles or they're oh, yeah. in like, rusted cages. They're crammed into things. It looks like someone's, like, basement where they, like, murder people, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it, but it's it's so true, man, because a lot of the stuff that I originally built my Conjure collection off was, um, you know, imports. Uh, and and yeah. the only stuff that was not questioned were stuff that were, like, that were BX. Uh, yeah. but remember the first one I asked you, Mar uh, Bill, when you and I first became friends? And I, I told you about this yellow Neo I felt great about, and it was it came in label as a Lira, and I told you who it came from, and you're like, they ain't no Lira. <laughs> yeah, I have a, I actually have an old school picture of a Lear that we uh that we brought in. It's on the business card. It's it's on my wall though. It's like framed, but uh, it was a, one of our old DNJ Reptile business cards, and it's a Lear on it, and it actually looks very similar to a, to what you would think a Sarong would look like, you know, or a Jaya. Yeah. Uh, well, the, so the whole when, thing, they, when the Lears were coming in, they they resembled more like Jaya and Sarong, you know, in a way. They had a little bit more of this, the yellow on the sides, too, coming up, like right where it meets the belly scales. But it was mostly mostly the blue, like the blue dorsal was the Lears. The, well, the, the whole thing about, I think, like getting back to Luke's question, the whole thing about Wamina is, and I am no locality guy at all, right? Yeah. You know, the whole thing about Wamina is Wamina is an airport. Right. Yeah. That. That's. Yeah. So there is no. Lo there, there is no Romina locality. That's yeah. just the airport where all these different localities came to and were then flown out of. Yeah. So, so now, like Romina is sense. not a, a lot of the purists. And gosh, we've got Ryan Young in here and Patrick and all these guys could explain it a thousand times more than me. But um, that's why they started calling Romina's Highland. And they were Highland types. Yeah, they could have been. They could have come from anywhere, but they were just brought, oh, yeah. blown out of the Wamina Airport. So I think what it is is in in Erie and Jaya and PNG. I think there's an uh, there's a mountain range, but it goes it goes across the yeah. island exactly. and it doesn't yeah. go up and down. So it divides the north from the south, but it doesn't go from shore to shore. But I mean, I, I'm sure it it's isolated enough where animals are exhibiting their own individual traits and characteristics, you know what I mean? And developing slightly different. So I do believe that there are different isolated pockets of highland animals that carry different characteristics and traits, but who the hell's to say what's what, you know what I mean? Like, you really don't know. You, you really will never know. I think I think it's easier to tell, like, you know, an Aru, a Bayak, stuff like that, but, you know, a Maruk. But even so, you know, it's you really you, you just never know. These people are they're just trying to make a buck. These people yeah, are they're, they're sure. dirt poor. They're taking whatever they can from the jungle. You know what I mean? They're 
they're lying about things being farmed if it's not from one of the good, you know, uh, facilities over there, you know? Yeah. I mean, you yeah, just you never, you really know, you never know. You got to take things with a grain of salt, you know? Yeah. So I, mean, I do, been, I do hundred percent believe now though, that, that all these, there could, that there are all these isolated little pockets where things, yeah. you know, you, you only find them in this one, one area, you know? Yeah, uh, I, I believe that too. I yeah, just don't. I just don't think you could label which ones which. Listen, they, they all come in, but I do believe it. You know, there's lots of other examples of where that's the case in states, right? I mean, again, yeah. I'm no uh, expert on you, you know, but the, like these guys that are collecting from certain freaking, you know, it's got to be like within 10, 10 square miles, you know, of like gray bands. Well, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I, I think there's a precedent in other species that you could definitely that could definitely be the case yeah, yeah. like the, the island morphs like you know like i said like the biac um you know you're not getting an aru off a of biac island you know what i mean so you, you know it's 100 percent a biac aru you the aru islands you know it's you know it's definitely an aru but when you come comes down to the mainland you have so many different looks you have so many different areas and you're right they could be collecting from the north the south the east the west and then they all come to the center and ship it out of the same airport you have yeah. no fucking idea, you know? And then a lot of that is like, what's hot at the time, right? Well, yeah. you know, then, oh, well, then it must be that, you know? Well, I remember even back then, you know, Bushmaster, they weren't crossing localities at all back then until they saw what was going on back here in the States, you know, in the hobby. Everyone's, you know, a Rubaiac crosses yeah. this is some wild shit back then. And they're like, fuck, let's do it. You know, you had yeah. Vladimir and was Igor over there. I don't even know their two names, the two Russian guys, but they were, yeah. you know, they just started right. crossing everything, man. Yeah. So making their own, why not? You know, they're like, that's what's hot in the States. So that's, I think that also kind of messed up a, a little bit too, because I think for a few years, they got a little crazy with trying to make crosses that they stopped focusing on pure localities. I think they muddied some stuff up over there as well. You know, I, I remember um, even Duncan and Danny, I mean, I remember being a kid and them telling me that they would, that they would have people that would collect in towns, like uh, the, the village people, you know, they would, uh, they would go out, they would collect, and then they would send it all to the people in Bali. And then the villagers there would keep them in a tree. They would fence off the area, and they would just have like a 50 to 100 chondros in a single large tree. Jesus. <laughs> Damn. Fucking, yeah. And then Danny, you know, Danny and Jimmy went over there, and he's like, uh, he's saying, uh, yeah, the village is saying, like, because they, they went over there a few times because uh, Danny was living over there for close to 30 years. So he'd show them the little village, and they'd go, he said they put eight foot fences around it, uh, like wood fences that they couldn't like get up and they isolated all the shrubbery and had one tree, like a medium sized tree. And they just had all the conjures just living in the fucking tree, That's all different ones. So, and then at that point, when you have 50 chondros living in a tree, do you know what's what? You know? No, you have That's no crazy. idea. Yeah. No, no. Awesome. But then you, you look back in the states, you're like, "Yo, Cyclops is selling for a lot of money right now." And you're some poor <laughs> villager in fucking Valley. Like, I need a new <laughs> pair of flip flops, man. <laughs> My underwear's got seven holes in it. I need some soap. Uh, my, dirt, my dirt hut needs a new fucking thatch roof on it. You know what I mean? Gotta be a Cyclops. You know it is. I mean, it's so true, man. Because you know, we're talking about how things get either mushed or you know, put into marketing terms here in the States, but that shit's happening back over where they're coming from too. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because, because they, over could, there too. They, could, they have the control to do that, you know? And, and, yeah. and who are we, unless your ass is going over there and checking out this fucking tree for yourself, you don't, you can't determine shit. And, oh, and no. yeah. Marshall, Marshall, I'm so glad I do designers because I don't have to, <laughs> worry about this shit, man. It would, yeah. it would keep me up. Yeah, no, this. we're just, we're just, we're just fucking it up for everybody else. Yeah, no, yeah. honestly, <laughs> honestly, this is, this is, if anything, this is encouraging people to go to the designer game because <laughs> really, like, if you're trying to be a purist, you're just fooling yourself because you, unless you got fucking actual documentation that you discovered yourself, you're, you're really just, I don't know, unless you patch with yeah. a bunch of BX, I don't know. It's crazy. This is you sound like you sound no, like every captive breeder on the MVF back in the day who wasn't <laughs> selling imports. Yeah. Dude, Ryan I, Young, I hey, Ryan, hey, Ryan, hey, Ryan Young is punching the air right now. He is pissed. <laughs> yeah, he is, man. <laughs> like, Leave my locality alone. Yeah, I mean, it's I, I, I think it's easier to say this is Highland stuff. 
And then this is, you know, you, there's some localities, you know exactly what it is. And the rest of the stuff, it's, it's tough, man. It's, it's, you got to know who you're getting it from. Like we said, even then you really don't even fucking know. Yeah. But like back then I wasn't even geeking out over the names. Cause I think even does Bukandini even exist anymore. Uh, Patrick said wow. it did. Uh, that was one of the that was one of the names that that was that was one of the localities I was going to say that I when you when you mentioned uh, you know Danny and what, what are the, what are the names the brothers Oh Danny and Jimmy Gorman yeah. Danny yeah when you said that I thought of Bugandini immediately Yeah that was uh, my first condo Bugandini but I I don't even know if people consider that a real locality anymore I think you know? is that an island I think so like it's an island near Biak or you know, a small oh, man, I, I'd be lying to you if I told you I knew, you know. I'm like, <laughs> come on, Patrick. Come on. Come on, Ryan. Yeah, on, yeah help us out, man. Houdini, is, it, is it its own island? I think it's its own little island off of beyond. I mean, I I'm, thought it was, I'm, I'm, I'm terrible as it is because that getting back into the hobby. Now there's all these, you know, different uh, subspecies and everything. You know, it was, it was, uh, back then it was only Morella Veritas. So, so it's <laughs> coming back. I'm like, I'm lost. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm having anxiety attacks. I don't fucking know what's what anymore. <laughs> Vinny, since we're on the topic of localities, do you have any pure locality projects happening right now in your collection? I actually have uh, two pure Biak pairings going on. That's all. That's, yeah. you know, my other locality animal is just a pure Aru. She's a... Uh, She's gorgeous, man. She's uh, I actually got her from Joe Swatowski. You know, everyone said he's terrible. He's terrible. But uh, I took my chance. I rolled the dice. I saw a nice animal. I got it. Came with covered in water blisters, but fucking it shed right out. Beautiful, healthy animal. And I'm, I'm so happy I got it. Ended up being a female. So yeah. I, ironically, I have no desire to pair her to another Aru because I don't feel like producing a bunch of fucking green babies. For some strange reason, you have a beautiful Aru with all this white and all this blue. You breed it to another Aru with all this white and all this blue, and you get a bunch of green babies. <laughs> could hardly any white, you know? And, and, and what's crazy, you know, because Socrates had a pure Aru pairing, I think, three years ago, and he had, he had like, a, quite, I think, like 16 or 17 babies, and mm. I think only one of them really came out like the parents that look like, and all the other yeah, ones it, came it, out it's really strange. Green. It's a fucking conundrum. I don't even yeah. know what it is. Only, o- only uh, Ryan. Ryan's been able to do the best, I think. Ryan Young. Okay. With yeah. uh, reproducing so, the white. So coming from yeah. the chat, coming from the chat, Bocandini is on the mainland. Okay. It's not. It's not. Uh, it is that, not that's what I, I thought because it was it was part of one of the high the highland shipment. You know what I mean? But yeah. I don't want to pretend like I know definitely. I don't want to just talk out my ass. You know. Yeah. So so Vincent, this is your first year breeding. You would say like you're for officially like going yeah. at it this first year after everything that you've been yeah. through. So, so two years ago, I gave it a shot when I was building my collection, but I didn't have these rooms and I, I had uh, my cages kind of scattered throughout the house. So I moved into this house uh, to 2021. We moved in, you know, right. in the beginning of summer. So I had a lot of my stuff at home. Uh, once I moved into here, I had, uh, I had cages in the living room. I got central air going on. I'm trying to figure things out, what I'm going to do. So it was kind of like a shit show. You know what I mean? Didn't really have anything organized. I figured if I just paired things up, it would, it would take. And uh, I got lucky with a, a Biak pairing and she, uh, she went the distance. She laid eggs, gave me a nice clutch. I think um, eight or nine eggs, all solid. And uh, they went almost the whole distance and day 53, 54. I'm like, I'm calling Patrick. I'm like, yo, what's going on with these fucking eggs? They're not hatching, man. They look great. Blah, blah. I'm showing them pictures. Like they still look good. I cut them open. They're all dead, old dead babies with like kinked spines, you know? Yeah. So, mm. Yeah. So that was two years ago. So I gave her a year off and I said, you know what? Let me spend the next year or two just building my enclosures, building the rooms, getting everything ready. Let me do it right. So I don't need to, because back then I'm like, was it the central air running outside? Was it this? Was it that? Was it me moving them around? There's so many things going on at the time that so many factors that I, I could have fucked them up in any which way, you know? Is that what so, Patrick uh, told you? What did Patrick tell you? No, he told me to cut them. He was just telling me to cut them. At the time, he was saying, you know, you don't, it's hard to determine what really causes that. It could be genetic. It could be, you know, fluctuations in the incubator. And, and at the time, you know, I, I had my incubator set up in a room when it's fucking 68, 67 degrees in the room because the central air is in the house, you know? So it just wasn't a good setup. I wasn't prepared, but... You know, you jump on Instagram, you see everyone's doing it, this and that, and everyone's pairing and everyone's getting eggs and you get, you get a little excited. You know what I mean? You yeah. get ahead of yourself and you're like, let me throw these together. They, they look ready. It's the time of the year. They've been getting night drops, you know, and uh, I got lucky, but 
it wasn't the right time, you know, and my time will come right now. That same female uh, ovulated last week. So nice. Yeah, we'll see. You know, fingers yes. crossed. She could drop dead any day. She could give me a bunch of slugs. It's of it's course. really a numbers game with chondros, man. You just don't know, man. You can't count your chickens till they hatch. It sucks because you just really can't think of it. But then, no, like, I don't how even can want you to show not, it how can you not mean, think of it? It's like it's yeah. so fucking difficult, man. Yeah, um, man, they're, they're that's, always, and, that's what we said the last show, or maybe a couple shows ago. Locks, what locks don't mean ovulations. Right. Ovulations don't mean eggs, and eggs don't right. mean neos. And neos don't mean. And neos don't, neos don't mean. Yeah, neos don't <laughs> even. You're not even there when you get neos. Right. <laughs> you're, you're like halfway there. Go, yeah, to Mark, yeah, three, yeah. go to Marshall and say you got Neos. He's going to tell you prolapse is next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that, that's, they're, they're a heartbreaker species, man. But they're, they're, they're one of the most beautiful snakes you'll find. I mean, even take the color and pattern away. you got this beautiful arboreal snake that's, you know, wrapped up on a vine with live plants. It's got the head of a fucking dragon. Like these, these you know, this big head. His big, his big face is just so beautiful with all the heat pits and everything around it. it it's like a dinosaur, you know? It's beautiful. It's the best. I love they're it. They're the best, man. The arboreal snakes, I, I, I love all of them. But the chondros in particular, they're, they're one of the most beautiful snakes. Just what, even for equal. What, what, else do you, what else do you keep uh, in, in your collection, Vince? So right now I have, have 5.8 Amazon tree boas. Nice. That are all, they're all mostly uh, red calico. I have one red calico, red calico tigers. They're all from Rory uh, Gresco. It's another person that Patrick uh, introduced me to. He actually, I think he did it on purpose because I, you know, I had at the time I'm saving all this money for chondros. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I, he, you know, I saw a picture of a, they posted a picture of a nice Amazon. I'm like, wow, that's really nice. I didn't know they're getting like that because when I was younger, I had a, you know, a little, you know, Halloween phase. And they're beautiful as babies. When they get older, they look like a lump of shit. Like, in my, that's my opinion, I think. I think they look ugly, you know what I mean? The, the comments. So I, I get back into it several years later. And Patrick's like, you know, Rory, this guy, Rory Gresco, has got some really nice stuff. You should check it out. Next thing you know, I'm spending like fucking 15 grand on fucking <laughs> Amazon <laughs> tree bows. I could have been spending it on Tondros. You know, so I, I went, I just went crazy with that. I, I just couldn't believe it. And I'm like, you know, it's, it's kind of it's kind of new people it's like the tip of the iceberg with the species it's uh chondros it's i'm kind of late in the game you know uh they're always going to hold their value because they're not an easy species to breed and right. like you said like they're very fragile snakes you know they don't like it, just because you know you get a lot doesn't mean this and that you know so you you really need numbers with them you need you need a large collection to be producing annually and it's just it's already kind of been done, you know what I mean? It's like whatever you produce is going to be nice, but the calicos, the high yellows, the high blues, the high blacks, there's nothing new anymore, really. You know, unless Marshall, you, you know, you keep going with the albinos and shit like that and produce some more and carry that gene out, you know. But reality is it's like a, it's it's already kind of been done, but with the with the Amazon tree bows, it's the tip of the iceberg. You don't know what you can make yet. You could still you could still grow from there. And you could still create new things. So I thought that was exciting and like a new project to dive into. So I ended up getting a a bunch of yeah five point eight from most mostly unrelated lines. I have uh, two brothers and two sisters that are particularly I, I picked out because they're from uh they're half siblings. The two brothers and the two sisters are half siblings from each other, and. Uh, really beautiful red calicos and red calico tigers with not a lot of black markings and they came from bicolor and uh bicolor tigers you know yellows mm -hmm. so to me that was so interesting that he was producing these beautiful you know uh super bright reds and, and red tigers from yellow animals so i thought that those were interesting pairings so I, I picked those up and from what i've seen you know when you're producing when you have the reds and you outcross them to a, a yellow, I think it brightens it up. And my goal in the future is to kind of get the black out of them, maybe. Because I'm not a, you know, Randy, Randy loves the dark stuff, but I, I like the light stuff. I want to get, I want the high white. I want the bright red, the bright, clean yellows. I don't, I don't, I want to get that muddy. For me, for me, it's when they're uh, extreme one way or the other, you know, either a yeah. lot of black, like solid black or no black. Yeah, you got uh, the leopards too, right? Uh, I have one leopard, yeah, and he sired one litter this this year. So yeah. I've got uh, you know eight babies that are het leopard. We you know I think oh. is the 
is the uh, current thought that that it's uh, that it's a recessive, but there's also some some babies that look 100% different and they're just normals. Yeah. Um, so, you know, is that het influence? Is that, uh, is that just a, is it an incomplete dominant and the leopard is the super form, you know, who, who knows, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's what, that's what's so great about it. Cause people still don't know yet. So it's, that's, it's, it's new. It's, it's like a fun project that you could really explore and you could really, take it further in the hobby, you know? Well, Vince, I, yeah, I, I, agree. To, I do have to disagree with uh, everything's been done in Condros. Like, <laughs> Not you, everything. You, I'm, you know, you I know what you mean. You're fucking kidding me. Where you said the tip of the iceberg with Condros, designer Condros. <laughs> Mark Hager is, is going to show the world that yellow Condros can be high black, you know? Yeah, I mean, John Leckie's did John Leckie's doing that too, man. I think he's got some good high black stuff from yellows as well. He's been working on that for a while too, right? Yeah. Yeah, John. Yeah, yeah John, you know, John's the yellow master. And yeah, Mark yeah, no, yeah, I mean I, I do I guess I, I agree, you know. There there is there is some things to do still. It's you know well because, I because, think, because I just, there's so much unknown with the Amazon still, you know, there's just, it's just, just beginning. So yeah. if I you want to get I, your feet wet and mad, it's the time, you know? Yeah. But I'll also say this. So, I mean, there's only a few doing crazy shit with, by the designer Condros and it's only a matter of time where people that bill sold Condros to and other people sold Condros to get their shit down and they produce some fucking crazy. I, so we have yet to see a bunch of crazy shit really hit the scene um, in the Condro game. And, and, and we're just getting there. I feel like. Yeah. I, yeah, I guess, you know, if you think about leucistic or like, you know, a solid melanistic animal, you know, something like that, you know, morphs like that, I, I would like to see that come out if that could ever be possible. It's, it's, know, just, a, it's, a it's, a it's just a different, it's a different, it's just a different thought process with the Amazons yeah. because you're working, it's almost kind of got like a ball python element to it yeah, because of the, the way the yeah. genetics work. Yeah. Whereas with, with Chondros, you, you know, are we going to see, I mean, like, what else could there possibly be? We've, you've got, you know, everything from solid blue, solid yellow, solid black. I mean, that, that's what are, I'm trying to say. Yeah. Like, I know are we going to, are we going to get but... solid pink? You know, probably not. So, yeah. so to, to, to your point, you know, uh, uh p different, know. different Listen, bloodlines will be slightly different, but Listen, it's not going to be I, like more. You know, every year, Chondros are produced that drop my jaw. Like, yeah, yeah I, for sure. Okay. 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 Let me ask yeah. you this, though. Let me ask you this. Do they, do they drop your jaw more than what is in, like, the complete Chondro book or yeah, or exactly. less or the, the same? Ones, the they're all different, nice. but but are they – they're they're just – it's the same thing, just a, a little, you know, like in a different – it's got a different twist on it. You know, it's not yeah. like a combination of, of – different genetics that you have to no, i'm not hating either they're my favorite species. yeah no me that. neither yeah, yeah so. no I, I, I get the difference i i get the difference but i i still think that i don't know just every year it seems like stuff is produced that it was not in the complete chondro yeah you know stuff that had no you know no possibility of being produced then right but has it has it advanced the species do you think or, or is it or ha has it advanced the 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 hobby of breeding them, or is it just a, a different look? You know what I mean. I don't know if I'm saying that in a way that makes sense. No, it's not, it, it makes sense to me, but I don't. I don't want to come off like I'm shitting on my favorite snake either. I, 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 Marshall, Marshall, Marshall's shitting on the chondros right now. It's crazy. No, no he's not. No, he's not. He's, he's, he's I'm not. He's an Amazon man now. He, he's an Amazon guy. <laughs> he got his feet wet in the Amazon. Yeah, it's, it's addicting, man. They're not. You know, when I was a kid, they were the nastiest little snakes, man. They were so, such shitty animals. I don't know if it's several generations of breeding now, but they got, they're they're sweethearts, man. I can reach in there and just pick them right up, you know, let them come right out, right out to me. It's fucking awesome, man. They're so, so they're my wife's favorite now. They're so inquisitive. They have, like these little bird heads. They just come right out and they're just looking at you and like, go nose to nose with them. They're, they're hey, so they, they, they shit all over you though, right? When you take them out. No, they don't, man. Mine don't, at least. Uh, I guess it's if they're used to you, you know. If you got if you're active in your room a lot, you handle them a lot. I mean, I don't handle them per se a lot, but uh, I'm I'm in their cages a lot. I mean, I'm not gonna. They lie. do I'm shit. So they do. High. They do just shit a lot. Period. They shit more. a lot. Period. Yeah. So like, I, yeah. I, I put those. Uh, 
I built all the new shelving the other day, and uh, within hours of them being in the cages, they shit <laughs> all over oh, the shelf. I, I, all I'm over white, it. too. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going in there. MJ, oh, right, I'm, I'm, enough. I'm, I'm not an Amazon guy. <laughs> I'm over it. <laughs> but I've heard enough. We're going to make you one, man. Bill, hey, Bill would get an Amazon tree ball out of his collection just as fast as of a super dwarf. Just so you yeah, know. Oh, I, I, I'll them, I'll I don't know. As fast? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. That's epic. Bro, I'm telling you, man. Some of these, they're so pretty, bro. They're so cool. All right, you can do a lot more with your enclosure. You know, you, you don't just have the couple of branches. You could... You have crisscrossing branches. You have shelves for them to sit on. You have arboreal hides. They'll go on the floor. Under they, the don't, they don't. They don't get big enough for me, man. They're just because I'm an emerald guy, bro. And and Vince, once you get your emerald tree bow game cracking, you're gonna. I guarantee you favorite those more than the. Bucket. I do. I do want emeralds. I do bad. They're, they're I mean, I've always wanted basins, but I I got a you know champagne taste beer pockets. You know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, because Marshall, be on. Hey, Marshall. Marshall. Like Marshall. Marshall. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's that Miller Lite. <laughs> Marshall, okay, Marshall, I want to know though if you if if you feel more confident about anything when it goes to breeding, you feel more confident when it comes to breeding Amazon tree boas or your green tree pythons? Um I you know, I don't know. I haven't produced enough Amazons really to say. Uh it's easier. Which one's easier? Amazons are easier. Okay. Yeah. I asked that. Yeah, this, this is, and this is my first year. Uh, this is my first year breeding Amazons in my life. You know, I'm trying right now. I have a. Uh, I only have two pairs together, but I have one pair right now. That the past couple of nights, it seems like they've been locking up between the lights go out. They come. They are, they're in the hide together all day. So I have no idea what's going on inside there. But every time for the past week, I've been coming in. This one pairing has been coming out of the hide together, sitting on the the branches right there around between 8 and 11 p.m., and they've been locking up almost every night. So oh, nice. tonight, I kind of fucked things up. I don't think they're doing anything right now. <laughs> so I, and no no offense, but we're going to get back to chondros here. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, how many chondro pairings are you looking at doing this year, or where, where, where are we at as far as you going full-blown with how so, many? Yeah, go ahead. So right now, let me think all together. I have a uh, one, two, three, four, three. I have four point one, two, three, four. Four point five, I think, right now. Adults. So, yeah, yeah, Those are adults. Adults, right? Two, three, four. I'm drinking a little too much. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six females right now. Six females and uh four males. So Okay. And you're pair you're trying to pair all of them this year? No, no. I saw my Patrick Holmes girl is uh, a 2019. I'm waiting till next year. Uh, my Aru female. I'm waiting till next year. She's a 2019 animal. Uh, waiting for that. I have a 2020 Wrangler Mercury female that I got from John Irby that I would like to pair in the next year or two. But she uh, she had like a slow start. I don't know what it was. She wasn't. Uh, I keep, was keeping them all the same, and she wasn't digesting her food properly. I noticed out of nowhere she was. Uh, she would eat her food. She'd be perfectly healthy. And then about over a week later, she would regurgitate. Whoa, so a week like, later? Regurg over a week later. I couldn't tell if it was shit by looking at it, shit or or regurg. But you smell, you know it's a regurg. You oh, know what I mean? Sure. Oh, so yeah. I'm, I'm in the medical field and I'm like, well, this she's throwing up digested food. I'm like, it, she's not sick. I'm like, and then, you know, I waited several, you know, a couple of weeks later and I fed, you know, I fed her again. And the same thing happened. I started taking her out. I feel in her. She started... She was kind of developing a blockage with her urates. So what I started doing was I started injecting the mice. I got the urates out. I soaked her. I massaged it. I got it all out of her. No prolapse or anything like that, thank God. And uh, she uh, started eating again. So now what I do is I inject because she holds her. She holds it in for a while. She doesn't shit so great like the other ones. Which kind kind of worries me because I'm like, how great of a breeder is she going to be? Is she going to be egg bound? Is she going to pass the eggs? You know. So she worries me, and she's on the smaller side, but she's eating great now and doing well. It's just she hasn't. I feel like she missed that growth spurt that they get at that two that you know two year range, two three year range, where they start getting that nice growth spurt. And I think she might have missed it a little bit. So I don't know if she's going to be able to go next year. I'm hoping the year after. But uh, that that's what I'm looking forward to. And then I have the um, I have a bill. I have like a, a half. I think it's a half sibling. It's one of yours. It's the what is it the 
the Soul Train. Okay. So, yeah, the Soul okay. Train when uh, he uh, John Irving read her to the niece. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I have I have that. I bought them both genetically sexed female, and that one shed plugs. So that one's cruising all over right now. So Ooh, I'm not sure. Wait, what? Say that. Say that one more time. You bought them genetically sexed females. Genetically sexed females. Oh, yeah. John. Yes. Yes. It's not his fault, but you know, no. it's yeah. But uh, yeah. Huh. Turned out to be male, so I, I shot myself in the foot. That, there. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever heard of that happening. Yeah, I think it. I think he. Well, he warned me in the very beginning, so I said I wanted a female. He said, "Listen, they all came back female, the entire clutch." And I, there's something inside tells me that's not accurate. So I'm just yeah. letting you know in advance it might not be female. So he was honest about it. He he yeah. felt iffy about it too. So it, I thought it was a female for a while because it was a, it was a good size. It was the best feeder. I picked it out not because it was the nicest looking one, but because it was the top feeder of the clutch. Yeah. So uh, I I grabbed that animal and just thinking it might be a female in the end. Of course, it's a male. So you know I'm really limited with female designer animals. Mm -hmm. I, that's that's what kind of sucks right now. So I have a good lineup because I have a I have a, a male uh, Hades psychotic. So that's a. Uh, that's from Frank Gatton and Greg Waltz, you know, FGGW 2005. And yeah. uh, that's a really nice, he turned out really nice and he's cruising. He's beautiful. And so what is that? That's a SH05188 cross to SH05086. That's cross to Mr. Blue Forest to Carpet Man Blue Diamond, I believe. And so what, does he, what does he look like phenotypically? He's got like a... I gotta get some. I'll get some good. It's so hard to photograph this animal. So he's got like a black peppering all down the back, and then he's got no green. He's got like a like a teal blue. It's like a green blue. Like, yeah. you know, and it's all on the sides, and his head is just dirty. He's got black specks on his mouth, his face. He's really fucking cool. He's different. He's really nice. He's got a like a short little pit bull head. Sounds cool. Really cool animal. So, and then my soul train niece animal. That animal's uh. It's almost like a, it's beautiful blue. It's all, it's like, it's a, it's like a blue green, but the blue coming up from the belly onto the sides, it's just. Is that, so is that, ni blue. is that night train? That's, that's night train. That's my animal night train. Yeah. This one right here. This one right here. It's this just cool. beautiful, man. And he's cruising like crazy too. So what I'm, what I'm thinking is, you know, next year, this year I have uh, three pairings going. So this year I have two pure by pure by unrelated pure by pairings like i said the one uh the one pairing already ovulated so i'm hoping to get a pre-lay shed in a couple of weeks the second pairing i didn't put together till uh less than a month ago so they've only been together for about three three weeks or something like that but uh they didn't do anything at all for the first four or five days they didn't even the male didn't even move and normally if they don't do anything on the first night or two I yeah. separate them and I'll put them back together in a little bit. But I said to myself, you know, he's uh, I don't plan on pairing him with any other females this year. I'm just going to keep him with this one female. That's my primary focus for him. So I'm like, let me just leave them together. I got a little lazy. They sat together the opposite sides of the tank on the front perch. Didn't move at all. A muscle, not day or night. No cruising, no nothing. And then uh, all of a sudden I walked in one day after five days and they were locked up and then they locked up day and night for like almost a week straight awesome. was, there, what, was, there any, was there any like any rain front or anything like that like any crazy weather changes that, that you can remember uh you know what it, it, it's funny like there there really wasn't i mean the whole week when they were doing nothing and the, the week after it was very rainy here so I'm, I'm hoping that did something but uh they they weren't uh, they both actually shed and I put them together with the female. She shed the night before, and he shed two nights before that. So I figured they both just shed. Maybe the the pheromones from the female shed will get them going. And he didn't do shit. But like, like I said, five days later, I'm glad I didn't. You know, I'm glad I didn't touch them because out of nowhere, I don't know what it was. They just went at it. I, I don't know if it was they weren't comfortable at first, but something happened. Something triggered them, and they uh they went right at it and they locked up beautifully for hours, for days, man. And then they uh. They went back to uh, sitting next to each other during the day, cuddling at night, sitting next to each other during the day, cuddling at night. And then uh, I separated them uh, for like another week. Uh, not a week. I'd say my four or five days. I just played it short. You know, I gave him a small break, offered her food. She didn't eat. But believe it or not, my females, from what I noticed here, I don't know if it's because the climate or whatever, but uh, 
It seems like my females let me know when they're ready. They they go off feed before they're even paired. So oh, wow. yeah, so the whole summer, the whole summer and early fall, like the my females will be absolute beasts. Like just like you walk past the cage, you're hearing thunk thunk. They're fucking smashing their head. They're trying to bite me. They're they're hunger mode. Right. And then uh, out of nowhere, I'll offer them food, and it's like they're shy. They're they're timid. They don't want anything to do with it. They tuck their head. I'm like, all right, maybe she's ovulating. Now it's time to pair. So that that's sometimes that's my key to throw them together. And for a while, I was talking to other people, and uh, it seemed like not everyone has the same experience. So I felt like, you know, is she? Because last uh, two years ago, I had the same same thing happening with my females, and I'm just getting back into the hobby, and uh, I didn't really have that too much when I was breeding in the past. So I, and it started happening with all my breeder females. They they all started going off food uh, during this time, and they, and they looked huge, like you know they've been eating. So and they weren't. So I took that as a sign of it's they're ovulating. You know, I talked to a couple of people. Most people never had that experience. And then all of a sudden, you know, some people started saying, you know, that that's that's what they do sometimes. So uh, I forgot who specifically uh, uh, told me that. But I, I, I was like, all right, it makes sense, you know, because now my females are they're all off feed. So I pair them together and they're they're going at it, you know. Right. Oh. When, now, Marshall, Bill, what do you guys know about this? Because I've been told from a couple people that you want to get them locking before they shut off food. Cause if they shut off food and then you pair, it might be too late or the error. I don't, and I don't know if I'm, I don't know if you guys experienced any of that or if you guys are pairing and then they shut off food. What, what's your guys experience, Bill Marshall? Go ahead, Marshall. Yeah. I, uh, typically they're on, you know, they're not female doesn't go off food until she's ovulated. So uh, at that point, um but all when when you pair them they're they're she she's still feeding yeah yeah i don't know they're not she's not eating yeah she didn't eat all three of my females that i'm pairing right here they're they're all off food right now if i open the cage i could i could tap her in the head she won't she won't do anything and they're not they're not you're sure they're not gravid this one i haven't seen any locks with um that one went off the one female in the middle, she went off feed before I even paired her. Had they been with? Oh, okay. Before oh, she's I, ever I, ever ever been with a male? No, this is her, she's a virgin, first time. Okay. So, but the, I heard Kenny last uh, in one of the couple episodes. He mentioned that he he gets the same experience, and I'm wondering if it's like a northeast thing or something because he's in. Could be, yeah. He's on Long Island too, you know. And he was mentioning that, and I'm like, when I hear other people mentioning their experiences that I'm having as well. Like, you know, cause I feel like everyone's rooms are a little different. Maybe their setups are different. Maybe the, you know, the pressure in the air is different, different elevations. I, I don't know what it is, but from my well, experience, uh, well, well, uh, not- well, what Kenny was saying is, is that he, uh, doesn't feed his females. Like yeah, he well, does shut them off. Kind of what I do kind of like what's what I call forced fasting. Yeah. So, you know, he, he goes all winter. I'll just go, I'll go, you know, eight weeks uh, where I won't feed them. And, and, Bill, 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 and that's in what time of the year? Remind me when you do that, October or November? Well, it's like now. I mean, well, it's all oh, right now. Well, it's kind of the end of it now, but it's, it's in the winter. You know, my temperatures start to drop. Um, and so I, I'll, you know, I, I just won't, I won't feed them whether they're, whether they're hunting and hungry or not. Okay. But that's when I'll start to pair the males and a lot of times they'll pair a male two three times and then they're done they go off you know they, they just they never go back on food they they stop eating and they go on to ovulate now, other times they'll pair it four or five times and after that fast period's over i'll start to introduce small meals and the females will eat a few meals and then all of a sudden they'll stop eating on their own again and then they'll ovulate yeah. Wow! I mean, so you guys, guys mind if I just go to the bathroom real quick? Yeah, yeah, quick. yeah. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. Okay, real quick, real quick. But, so, but Bill, Bill have, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead, Marshall. She's gonna say, "Have you ever had a female go off feed prior to 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 breeding?" Um, I mean, not that you no. know of. It sounds like because you because no, you just no, don't feed them. Yeah, well, because I'm I, you know I'm feeding them before that winter before I call the, the winter fast. I'm feeding them a little heavier than I normally would, right? And they're all they're all eating. I mean, when I when I start to cool temps and I and I start to you know 
fast them, they they will eat if I let them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I've never, I've never, never, not even one time had a female stop feeding that wasn't sick or gravid. Right. Gonna, that was gonna gonna lay something slugs or and, or and good and eggs. For me, oh, and, yeah. And for me, it's been like clockwork as far as like a female shutting off food and she was gravid. It's normally for four weeks. If there's four refusals, then that's when that that ovulation normally comes in my experience. But I, I but I've never had females shut off food before pairing. I I, I would say that yeah, I, like, like Bill, they'll keep wanting to eat, but I'll live. I'll limit that, and then. Yeah. They'll kind of they'll, they'll they'll shut off when when the job's done. I would say for me, you know I, that that's my it's been my experience too. So, but I have to ask you though, Bill. Like, are you that confident where you know if you have that female that has gone for you year after year, where she has uh, gone off food and they've she's got locks, you're okay with pulling that male, or do you like to keep that male till that ovulation's in? I, I'll keep it going until I ovulation. see that ovulation. Okay. But a lot of times, the the female will shut him down. Before she and they, they separate. And they yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, yeah. You can put them in there, and she's just not going to have any part of them because she knows it's already done. Um, and then the female will ovulate later. But to your point, I will still push that male until I see her ovulate. And, and, and since we could get on this topic, Vinny, let's talk about what you prefer as far as what you feed your dark chondros. There's a lot of different ways obviously since we've uh had this segment what do you like to go with as far as your adults go i usually feed just uh adult mice or large jumbo mice uh most of the year and then uh i like to uh fuck uh add in like maybe i'd say for my adult females if i'm getting if i'm cycling them getting ready to breed when they're eating in the late uh early fall uh late summer i'll give them some rats you know not too many i think like my female will average like a female will average maybe three rats a year you know just that one time of the year they'll get a, maybe a, a larger meal or every every other meal or something like that and that you know? that's like, before they shut off food normally yeah yeah got it uh, and, and so, often, but other than that all mice i mean I, I, it was just ingrained in me because I, you know when i was a kid going to the, talking to rico at the chicondra coalition table he specifically said to me he's like just rats he said and it was he gave me that whole wow. lecture on you know how an adult rat i mean adult mouse just mice, mice, right? Mice yeah, adult just, mice. That's what I meant. Yeah, adult just mice. Just mice. Uh, yeah. Be careful, Vinny. Muscular system. I, 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 I clip everything from this podcast and I repost it. You got to be careful, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking. I'm, this, it's the beer yeah, yeah, now. You're, you know? you're good. You're good. <laughs> I'm having so, too much okay. fun. <laughs> so you're a mice guy. You're 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 primary yeah, for the mice most guy part. Because Rico but I do believe rat. I do believe a, a a rat every once in a while is good. I mean, it's it's the breeding season. Usually in the jungle, you know, you get a you get you know the rainy season comes in. The animals are feeding. The animals are larger. It's the end of this end of the rainy season or whatever and the, they'll they'll get some rats in there you know so yeah. that's that's my logic at least it, it helps here there also i feel bad sometimes so my females they they're not the biggest females i'm not i'm not a big overfeeder you know i think that was one of my problems when i was younger i was feeding you know you you, you feed everything once a week when you fucking young you know i back in the day i'm like i was feeding yeah. So I might, you know, that that wasn't just a ball python thing. Everyone used to do that back in the day. Like once a week was a common thing, or what? That's, I, think, I mean, that's what I learned. But that's still so you know, Marshall. Don't, don't you think back in the day? I mean, what, once, once a week, a week? wild. That's what I was doing. Yeah, like it was every like maybe yeah. ten, every seven yeah. to twelve days or something like that. Right. Know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I, I don't think that was good at all. You know, sometimes like uh. I'll, no. I'll skip you know, my males. I don't even – even my males that aren't breeding right now, they're a little young, but they're cruising like my 2020 males. I'm not feeding them this winter. I'm just letting them cru – if they're cruising, I'm not going to offer them food. You know, So if every night when I walk in there and they're all over the cage, I'm going to let them get used to it. And uh, like I have them cycling too. They're at, they're at around 74, 75 degrees right now, those guys. But right. I'm not pairing them. You know. So Bill, I forgot if it was you or Marshall who says that females that you're going to be planning on pairing for the first time next year, you already have them cycling as well. Was that you, Bill, that said that? No, no, that was um, that was what is uh, Kenny? That was Kenny. Kenny, Kenny okay. did that. What yeah. do you, Bill, Bill, Marshall? What do you guys do for a female that you want to get ready for the next year? Anything? Or you just keep doing the normal. I, I personally treat them all the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pretty much the same. Yeah, once they come into this room, like this is my adult room. I plan on having 
hopefully when it's all said and done, 33 enclosures in here. But um, nice. I, once once the animal comes into this room, they're they're going through a cycle, whether they're breeding or not. You know, every yeah. year I want this to be the adult room. Right now it's 69, 70 degrees in this room, you know. Yeah. And if I want it to be colder, it can be. And then I have the room behind me, which is uh, it was supposed to be for my tools and car shit, but then I started putting rhino rat snakes in there, and I have a bunch of <laughs> twenty. You know, now I'm thinking of getting rid of all all my tools and stuff, putting them in a shed or something, because I want to turn. I want to get some diamonds or something in there, but that room drops to fifty fifty five, wow. and then it maxes it maxes out at like eighty two, eighty three in the in the summertime in the really hot days. So I don't even. I have a. They have heat panels because I have them in 20 inch cubed enclosures with plants and the plants are growing like crazy. And even though it's only 50, 55 degrees in there, you know, That's so awesome. uh, I figured a lot of people, you know, they take their animal from the enclosure when it's like a colubrid or it's a type of snake that really needs to brewmate and they'll put them in something else. and They'll put them in the garage or they'll put them in a shed or they'll put them in a, a wine cooler or something. And I figured, you know, I put um when I was still keeping my uh, rhino rats in the Cambro tubs and the, the hangar six racks when I was growing them out, I was thinking to myself, you know, where can I set them up where I don't have to move them around too much and, and hassle and all that shit. So I put a uh, couple of digital thermometers in the garage. And over that one year, I just kept checking, well, what is it? What is the low? What is the, what is the high in the summer? You know? So it worked out that it literally went from like 52, 53 degrees to like 82, 83 degrees. It was never, super hot i mean even for the rhinos i would say it's a little warm in the summertime but it's only a couple of days of the year it's, all, it's cement floor it's pretty cool in there you know so uh like diamond it, heaven yeah it just worked out beautifully so i i have the the radiant heat panels in their enclosures as like a fail safe so if it drops below 50 54 it kicks on you know yeah that's smart. So, but they're they're all brumating in their enclosures you know with the, with their hides and the plants and everything so i'll just let that go through a full cycle you know i i i uh, turn the, the lights off like an hour or two earlier. You know, they kick on like an hour later or some shit like that. So they get like a, a, a site, a light cycle too. So I'll, I'll try to pair those in the, in the spring for the first time too. Cause I never, I never bred those either, you know? Yeah. I, I, I mean, the biggest reason that I parted with a, all my colubrid projects is because I felt I couldn't get them cold enough. So I was like, what's the, yeah, what's that's the what point? it is, man. You need to get some shit cold, you know? Yeah. But, but like, Marshall, how do you pull it off? You got a couple colubrid projects going, don't you? Uh, just one. And that's which, remind me which just, one, that's, that's one you just recently got, right? Uh, um, I've had them for a couple years. They're, um, uh, trans Pecos rat snakes. Oh, oh, nice. Okay. And okay. they're, uh, this is the first year I've tried to, or I'm going to try to breed them right now. They're in, uh, they're in, you know, opaque, uh, rubber made boxes in like a super cold room, but it, it only gets down to like, uh, the coldest thing I can get them in there is like 65, maybe uh, 63, 62. And then the only other option I have is my garage. And it gets like, you know, it pretty much it's not insulated. It's got a lot of glass on, in it, like old glass windows. So oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it pretty much it, I think it'll get too cold. Like if it's freezing, you know, if it freezes one night, it'll get pretty damn close to freezing in there. Yeah, um so i don't put like a space heater in there with like you know the ones with the thermostat so if it's like oh. if it drops to like 50 it kicks on you know i'd probably get i'd probably cool them i'd probably put them in like a wine fridge or something like yeah, you were you're, saying you're, you're before one of, those, yeah. one of those mini fridges and shit that's what i yeah, uh, that, that's, but that's but my you know too. my buddy uh uh antoine who i got most of them from um he lives up in new york he thinks That'll be plenty cold, cool enough. Six, you know, low sixties. Yeah, because uh, so. I, I, I hear they just need some sort of an adjustment. It doesn't need to be drastically like fifties, um, and, and, right? And, but it just needs to be something. But something. Consistent. I mean, the main thing is the main thing is it's dark. It's way cooler than they're used to, and I'm not feeding them. Yeah. Um. So you know. And what, uh, they're gonna go back up to the low eighties or something in the summertime, and then yeah, well here, in, degree, you know, yeah here here in February I'll just bring them back into the into the main room, and you know it'll get up to a uh, mid seventies. So it's really it's a ten degree drop, but without the without the warm up period every day, mm -hmm. uh, instead of instead of a low of seventy two seventy three, it's sixty three, but with no warm up for two and a half months. Oh yeah, I think that I think that'll work. Yeah, we'll see, you yeah. know, uh, and then I do have some bull snakes that I just got for, from Patrick, actually, uh, but they're just babies. Oh, so. bull snakes. 
I forgot about that. Still, still got them. They're still Mark fucking Nicole. kicking ass too. Oh, They're fucking awesome. You haven't had them as long as I had my super dwarf. Not oh, yet. but I'm gonna, I'm gonna breed these, unlike Not you and your super dwarfs. <laughs> You gotta have them at least another six months, and then you talk. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Now I want to ask you my next topic that we want to get into here, Vinny. As far as um, you know, establishing is is a whole other level when it comes to keeping these right. And and I know you've had a, a little bit of experience with that clutch. You know, not really going the distance, but have you yeah. had any issues establishing any younger neos, or you know, at, at one point like? Was there a learning curve on how to get some of these things to eat back in the day, or were you always felt like you've had good eating snakes as long as you can remember? You know what? I've I've always kind of got lucky. I kind of used like a sounds terrible. I kind of like something's not going to eat. I don't fuck with it for a little bit. Let it starve. Right. Let it starve a little bit. You go back in a, a week. It does. If it doesn't eat, I'm not going back in the next day. I'm going to wait a whole nother week. Yeah, that's true. You know, and a lot of times it's, it's worked for me. I mean, I had a uh, Terry Burwell give me a really good deal on a bunch of rhino rat snakes in the past on the ones that I had because uh they were just they were just born basically and they weren't a couple of them weren't eating for him. And I'm telling you, after dealing with those fucking things, I, it's, they, they, I mean, they can be terrible, huh? Yeah, they, were, they were a pain in the ass, man. I was, I had one that I was like force feeding for several months, like and after a while, because I didn't want it to die, you know. But now it's a big, robust animal that. You can't it, it it won't refuse a meal. So it something just triggers and it just it just goes. And I'm like one of those guys where it's like in the end of the day, like I'm I'm not gonna force feed it its whole life. You know, if it's gonna die, it's gonna die. And that we're not all we're not all meant to make it to to 80, 100 years old. These snakes aren't all meant to make it. That's why I have such big clutches, big litters. So yep. you you know, you do what you can, but I'm not what's the point too? I'm gonna force feed the snake to live into adulthood so I could breed its genes and have babies with you know weak <laughs> shitty fucking eating habits that i gotta fucking stuff pinkies down its throat or i don't want to sell that to people i don't want that those genes being carried on you know what i mean so was it, it's was it, even worth it well eugene eugene Bissett said that right that not every tomato makes it to the salad bar yeah i think so, I think so but it's true man you gotta think about it like that so. i'm not sure how many salad bars eugene's been to but that's, that's yeah bill <laughs> <laughs> oh man um all right well listen i, I got a wrap-up question and bill why don't you get one ready and marshall get one ready okay um i have to ask you uh vincent you know if it comes down to you being able to go somewhere on a travel mission again and kind of do documentation on whatever reptile species what, what what would that reptile species be what would be the one thing you want to learn more about out there in the wild oh out there in the wild shit man I don't know. I mean, I, even just the chondros itself. I, I would love to go to Indonesia and go into the jungles, man. I think I think I would too, but then I think thinking about like, man, the mosquitoes and the bugs and <laughs> I can't handle like, that, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I could do it. Like, I don't know well, if I could story, do it for long is, periods of time. When I was in North Carolina uh, over the summer, we went. It was raining out, so we went to this nice marshy area, and it was just. We were looking for uh, uh, water moccasins and stuff like that, you know, uh, cotton mouths and shit. So uh, we're walking around and just a swarm of fucking mosquitoes. And my wife still has marks on her to this day. I didn't get a single bite. I don't know if my blood's fucking toxic. I probably got AIDS or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I got so lucky, man. But it's, it's just, I, if I could be in the jungle, I, I would be in the jungle any day, man. Damn. I love it, man. That's epic. Um, and, and, but I also got, I have to ask you, out of everywhere you've been, what's the most beautiful place? Oh, I mean, I love Costa Rica, bro. Like Patrick yeah, was saying, I've been there five times. Uh, I, I'm a little disappointed with some of the places that I went back to that they, I mean, Manuel Antonio, I went there like 20 years ago and the national park was absolutely beautiful. It was yeah. untouched, pristine, dirt trails. You could do whatever you want. There was yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, w I went back uh, like a couple of years ago. You know, they, they they tore down a part of the fucking jungle to make a kiosk and like an ice cream station, a sandwich shop. And they made it. They made all the dirt rainforest trails uh, wheelchair accessible. They paved them and put railing so you can't go off the trail. I'm like, what oh, the wow. fuck is this? I'm like, this is a national park. You cleared half the forest. So you can fucking put an ice cream shop and a sandwich shop and, and all this stuff. So disappointed, but uh, wow. Corcovado National Park is uh, 
is untouched. It's like that little, it's on the West Coast. It's like that little, like, a, like peninsula, something that sticks out. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's really nice. And uh, one, one of the only way to get there is by boat. So I, we went there for, we stayed at like this little place called Poor Man's Paradise. My wife was like, what the fuck did you get me into? They, we go to this little <laughs> village on dirt roads. We get into a, uh, we get on a river. We go down the, like uh, this river on this speedboat. We go all the way for like over an hour to the ocean. Then we go down around the coast and they go to drop us off. We get to our hotel. There's no, well, there's no bill. It's in a national park. So when we get there, there's no dock. They pull up. We're like, I'm like, what, what do I do? They're like, yeah, get into the water. Get in, motherfucker. <laughs> so my wife, I'm like, I got to throw your shit. Like, oh, yes, I'm like holding my luggage. My wife's like, are you fucking kidding me? I got to get into the water. I got to with my stuff. I'm like, we were there. They didn't have a restaurant. They, we had to, they cook breakfast and lunch and dinner for you. And if you miss it, they, you don't get fucking lunch. <laughs> but when I tell you we had our own beef, I was seeing Amazon tree boas. I was seeing all sorts of vipers, eyelash vipers. There was red macaws in the trees on the beach. There wasn't a single other development. There was no roads. There was no cars over there. It was just a dirt trail that went all through the woods. It was pure paradise, untouched, pristine. It's one of the most beautiful places in the world. And Costa Rica, they got some of the friendliest people. They got some of the safest areas. You could rent a car for 500 bucks and, Go wherever you want throughout the country in the week. You know what I mean? But Jenny, yeah. there's not a single street sign in the entire country of Costa Rica. There's not a what? A single street sign. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? The city's sketchy too when you get there. I don't like it, but it's that one road. It's really, it'll take you from, uh, it's really just one road that goes all the way down. You know what I mean? Wow. Uh, on both coasts. You, when you're when you're down on the West Coast, you can't cut across the jungle to go to the east coast you know yeah, what i mean you gotta go, yeah you gotta, you go, gotta go back north and go all the way up around again so that's that's the pain in the ass you know yeah. so you got to pick your poison whether you don't want to be on the west coast or the east coast. The east coast yeah so but that that was my favorite country it's it has everything you want it has volcanoes it has jungles it has cloud forests i mean where that's we were staying at a house where it was 50 degrees at night it was freezing one night a little uh cat eye like a uh, uh, snake fell on my wife and it was the thing was like limp it was like 50 degrees outside it was like you know <laughs> it was it was just it was it'll be, it'll be okay and, when it warms up when the sun comes out it'll yeah you'll be all right yeah 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 it, it that same forest that went from the 50s to like the the high 70s low 80s during the day because we we're a little elevated but i mean it, it has beaches that has I mean, you could go to you could go to Jocko Beach if you want to get freaking prostitutes and freaking uh, drinks, you know. Yeah, Bill, you know? get it, get her done. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it, it's got something for every type of person in that country. It's, you know, you, you what what other country can you walk to the jungle? You see dart frogs hopping on the side of the stream, and you see freaking Amazon tree boas, and you see freaking vipers and everything monkeys tapirs jaguars you know crocodiles shell fins and feathers mentioned the fishing the best fishing in the world that's yeah. what they say too i'm not a big fisherman but i have friends who are into it and that's what they say man yeah yeah man, it's true. beautiful it's, it's the best Incredible. country man yeah all right who's next with their hot or uh, with their uh, final uh, wrap-up question I i'll go i i, I want to hear more about the uh the, the your room uh, you mentioned that it was uh, an extra bedroom, and I don't know, it's a part of your garage. Like, what? Yeah, how do you have uh, it? I, I, can I do a walkthrough on this thing? I don't know. I think the light comes out when I unplug this thing. That's yeah, the yeah, problem. Yeah, you, you can. Go ahead. Uh, I don't. Go wait one second. I'm gonna unplug this. See if it. Yeah, that light goes out. You can still see though, right? So yeah, it's a li looks looks a little blue, but one second, one second. I'll, I'll show. I'll show you. It's a little. It's a little messy because I. I'll, but I'll show everything. So it's really, it's really, you, you walk in here. I don't know, can you see it? Let me see. Yeah. Am I showing it the wrong way, the right way? No, yeah, you're good. No, am I good? Okay, yeah, so I come in here. I got my rough scales right here. You know, I got my two incubators. I got all this, all the hanger racks. Yeah, those look nice. Yeah. I got, uh, these are all reserved. There's like, a, I think there's 108 tubs for Neos in the future you know i got my uh i got some squams up there that i really shouldn't have i got some uh canary chondros in here actually 
I got a pair of canaries that were that are on loan to me from a friend. And then I got my Dominican Reds down here. Now it's just the whole room's just super messy. I got all these plants and these these yeah. uh, box. I got a box turtles in here. I got half a dozen box turtles living in oh, here for shit. the winter. And then you come into here, and this was uh my this was my laundry room. So I built this. This is where the washer dryer used to be. Okay. So I, built, I built this. I have a you know I my kid washing my baby in here. So. <laughs> <laughs> I got my garbage. I, I soak snakes in this tub. I got uh, this. I put it on hinges. So if you need to access the boiler, you could put this up against the wall and it's flat, flush with the wall. I got my freezer, my chest freezer on wheels with uh, extra. So if I need to pull it all the way out, I can. And then this is my, my boiler room can get, it, it could get very warm in here. So this is why I set this thing up, you know, to keep it cool in the adult room for cycling. So when you, also, I got my cabinets. I got, you know, I got my bullshit in here for office supplies. I got all my medical supplies. Wait, wait, is this, a, is this a rinse station? Are you showing the rinse station? Well, yeah, that's yeah. That's he shared it earlier. Yeah. That's yeah. What do you? Your bath. Dude, what what so, do you do? What do you do in that thing? Like, what do you use fun. it for? Why, dude? Well, go you know in there. what it is. It's like. I figured, you know, I could either set up a sink, a slop sink, but then I'm like, I, I, I was talking to my dad because me and him are both handy. And I'm like, you know what? I want to build like a big dog wash station because I'm messy. Oh, I God. want the, I want to wash plants in here. I want to be able to take a big tub and just wash it in here. I you, know, I wanna, you know, I could turn it on. I could just, you know, blast it, do whatever. I can make oh, yeah. it that's, a, that's a sprayer's heaven right there. I fucking yeah, love Yeah, I got that. this thing, you know. I love it. You know, what, do they, that, what do they call that when they put the chondros in the in the water? The rain chamber? Rain chamber. Rain chamber. Yeah, yeah. Rain chamber. I, I honestly don't I, – I think because I feed my females, I mean, my animals a little less and I keep them hydrated, I haven't had any issues. I don't really need to use a ch uh, rain chamber personally, so I've been lucky with that. Uh, but, yeah, and I, I did it so I could have, like, you know, access underneath. I have so much OCD. I made it up match underneath too, you know? <laughs> That right. So, there. Yeah, I got the to all the tile was done. This this room was yellow. The floors were linoleum. I, there was no, uh, you know. And then you walk in here. It's a little messy right now, but I, you know, I got all my stuff, documentation and stuff, recycling, some more tongs. I got the two. You know, I pretty soon I want to fill this top row too. So it'll just be wall to wall cages. So I got all my Amazons over here. I got twelve cages now. I got to finish that one last top one over there for the, my 13th Amazon. And then, you know, you come over here and let me see. Sometimes it's less funky. So let me what, see. What, what are those temps at right now on those, uh, on those uh, thermostats? Uh, so, so this is it. So this one's running around 75. This one's 74. They're set at 71. Oh, wow. So, the so what, what I do is I have my... I have my my temperatures, my daytime temps run with my lights. They go from nine in the morning to six at night. So that's all. That's that's all the heat they get. When the heat kicks off, it takes a few hours for that heat to dissipate and it to actually drop to what I have it for the night temp. So that's why I have a kickoff at six because it's already it it turned off at six. It was eighty four degrees during the day. I have it set at seventy seventy one at night. So it's it's. What is it? Ten thirty right now, and it's only 74, 75. So it didn't even reach, you know, the 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 gold temperature yet. You know, by the time I come in in the morning yeah. at nine a.m., it'll be around 70, 71 degrees. So, Epic. Yeah, yeah, it takes its sick. time. You know, I I noticed that I didn't want my light my uh, cages warming up too early too because what I noticed was I was coming in in the morning and my chondros seemed to. They seem to lock up more at like four, five, six, seven, eight a.m. Like that type, that time, yeah. you know. Yep. So yeah. I wanted, I, I wanted the temperature to be still cooler at that time in the morning, and I didn't want my lights to come on too early because what I have is in my rooms. I, I wanted it. I really wanted it to be where I could, you know, uh, slowly. You know, I wish the light could come on at like ten percent, and over an hour, be a hundred percent. I wish there was a way to do that, but I don't know how to really do that. On you, you, you can do that. You can do that with a herbstat. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Herbstat, can you? Herbstat. The lights? Yeah. Yeah. But you'd have to run a herbstat to every enclosure, right? 
Yeah. Uh, if, yeah. If you're if your lighting all comes from your enclosures, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. One second, I I have to go to the bathroom so bad again. Of course. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. one second. One second. Hey, I'm the 58 year old guy. Why is he going to the bathroom all the time? He's been drinking, bro. He's good. Well, you've been drinking too, huh? Yeah. Fuck. What a cool, cool room, though. Yeah, it's yeah. super, super nice. Yeah, yeah it's shout, awesome. Shout there. Go ahead, Bill. What were you going to say? I was going to say, I wonder if he built that built that all out himself. You know, like I saw the pre-room, like the, you know, like the construction, like before he started working on it. It was pretty raw. I'm pretty sure him I, and his pops did it. I've seen the uh, I've seen the the rain chamber station before. I didn't know that it was his, but so somebody MJ I maybe you sent a picture yeah, of it. I spent it, and even even Ryan was like, "What the fuck?" Like he like he. Yeah. Not, Ryan doesn't. I don't think Ryan's ever showered in something that nice ever in his entire life. <laughs> Did you go to the bathroom in the rain chamber? We just got to know. <laughs> I have before. <laughs> I think in the middle of the night, I've kissed it once. Uh, <laughs> all right, hey, Bill, no, you're yeah, a... I, uh, You know what it is? I'm pretty handy. Uh, I, I have no background in uh, any of the trades or anything like that, but I've always been handy as a kid. Uh, you know, I built uh, quarter pipes and ramps and stuff Hell like that. Hell yeah. So I can put some shit together. So uh, I was like, you know, let me just put my mind to it, my creativity. I, I was putting on all different YouTube channels. I was getting 12 different designs from 12 different people. I, I just, you know... Uh, Frankenstein, my own thing, and I had a friend come over and tile it. My neighbor is a, a plumber, so he's been helping me for free. He's been so nice. great, man. Uh, nice. Everything. Nice. I mean, it's just been all my design. It's funny because my dad's like, I'm like, yeah, I want to build a, a like a snake a snake wash snake wash station. He's like, what the fuck is a snake wash? <laughs> fuck. He's like, what the fuck are you kidding me? He's like, he's like put a fucking uh, a, a slop sink there and call it a day, right? It's a boiler room. I'm like, it's not a boiler room. It's a snake facility. He's like, it's a basement. I'm like, it's not even a basement. <laughs> it's the first floor level. Like, I'm like, you couldn't win. So I just oh, that's did it, great. I just, I just winged it, man. And, I, and I'm so happy with how it came out because uh, when I was working at D&J, I remember they had a little slop sink and it was deep. But it wasn't that wide, you know? So I remember walking over, it was like, you know, three foot Neo D shares and things without the glass in it and holding it up like this and spraying it and water shooting all over oh, the walls. Nice. And, yeah. Oh my God, what a nightmare. I'm the type of guy that like, you know, I have access right here to just go right out into my back uh, backyard. So even when I take these water bowls out, whether it's winter or summer, I'm I'm tossing the, the shit water out outside, you know what I mean? Into the into the yard, to the lawn. So uh <laughs> It's just, yeah, it's just crazy, man. I, I, I love it, though. I'm, I'm really happy with how it came out, and I'm still I'm still progressing. There's so much to look forward to, because like I said, I still want to get this whole top row. I want to build this right where this camera is right now. I want to build a stack of three more on, like, a little storage cabinet where I can move it on wheels. So the only reason I didn't put this room on wheels, honestly, is because the floor is uh, is, is uh, tapered, is what it's called. It's, uh, yeah, it's like tapers, you know what I mean, or whatever. Sloped, yeah, sloped, yeah. So it's I had I had to I had to put. If you notice, it's like it's this uh, it's only like an inch or two off the ground over here, but all the way by the wall, it's like six seven inches off the ground. You know, okay, just, gotcha. just to keep it level. Otherwise, I would have had them. You know, I, I'm not a big fan of stacking my cages too, though, because it's when you get the belly heat. I mean, the you know the heat transfer to the bottom. It doesn't really give it too much of a, you know. A different, you know, uh, a range in the enclosure. So I always liked shelves, but uh, it's like, you know, when I had shelves and I had them stacked in the past, you know, you had to get to a middle one, you got to pull it all out, not having wheels and stuff. This, this at least allowed me without the wheels to still be able to pull out an individual enclosure if I needed to work on it or something, you know, without yeah. disturbing all the other ones. I really love that style. Like the shelving style is really awesome. Uh, to be yeah, I, I, you know what it is? When I was younger in my house, I, I put, uh, a 10 foot uh, countertop across across on uh, and I built one just like this in my house. And that's how I had the two rows of the the eight foot of the, the four uh, enclosures on the top and the four PVC enclosures on the bottom. So I always said to myself, you know, I'll stick with that design because I really liked it. It's just different, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's, I like it. It's, it's, and what I did was uh, this garage only had two outlets when I first moved in and they're on the other side of that wall. So when I moved in, I... Uh, I had a friend come over, put up this wall, insulated it, weatherproof door. So that's why it's, you know, it's, it's 
70 something degrees in this room and it's 55 degrees in the next room, you know? So when we put up that wall, uh, there was no outlets in this room whatsoever, not a single outlet. So there was 40 amps not being used in my um, electrical box. So I have a drop ceiling in my living room, which made it easier to transfer the wiring over. And I put a 40 amp box, uh, electrical box in this room. Epic. So now you're I, using have, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have three rows of outlets and each outlet has six plugs. Four of them are on a timer and two aren't. So those two are for thermostats on each one and the other ones are in a timer. So all the lights go on at the exact same time. I don't have to deal with like those bullshit little plug-in timers or anything like that. It's all digital in, built into the wall. Okay. You could hook your uh, th herpstat up to that then if they're all under the same controller. You hook your yeah, herpstat up there. So, yeah. so I think back, so. Back to the yeah. light thing. They would, they'd all, they would all dim on at the same time. That, that, would, yeah. that would be, yeah, if I could switch that over, that would be another upgrade. I'm always looking to improve, you know? So what I was doing right now is I was waiting till nine o'clock for my lights to come on because I have a couple of windows. So the light, if you come in here, you know, at two in the morning, it's pitch black. If you come in here at six, seven in the morning before the lights come on, it's light in here because the light coming through the window. So it kind of gives like somewhat of a natural sunrise where the room starts lightening up before the lights just psh, and blind the animals, you know? So it's, it's like a grace period that it gives them where it starts lightening up in the room itself before the lights all kick on. So I like that. But if I could switch it over to a dimmer, I mean, that would be the most ideal thing. You know, you have the lights kick on at like 5%, 10%, and they slowly brighten up as the, as the, it turns on, you know, over an hour or something. Yeah, I think you could do that easy. That'd be cool. Yeah, shit, man. I know I got all the Varium electronics. I stayed true to those fucking uh, things, you know? I didn't right, switch so over. Everyone swears by Herbstat. I just, they've always done right by me. I, I didn't want to, I already had several of them. I didn't want to have to redo everything. I'm OCD. I don't want blue and green. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I need to be all uniform. Well, you, you, you are OCD. Yeah, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> all right, Phil, so you're up. Nothing, guys, yeah, right I'll go now. with my question. So, uh, Vinny, you're so enthusiastic, man. It's, it's yeah. freaking awesome. Oh, thanks. Uh, well, I, I honestly wish I could do another podcast because there's so much I didn't even talk about. Just even funny stories from the past. I mean, dude, oh, shit, we'll, man. Just we'll, so we'll much get, stuff. We'll, we'll get you back on. I'm yeah, sure. yeah. Sure. yeah. Just the bullshit. You know, not even – it's not even just Condra. It's just about the hobby in general. I got some funny stories with some people. You know, some stuff I can't even say on here. <laughs> oh yeah, you. Oh yeah, you can. <laughs> Trust me, you can say anything. I'll get myself canceled before I start. You know? <laughs> well, my my question is, so you know, you're obviously like built and building for growth. So, do you anticipate yourself like, are you going to have organic growth, or would you envision like bringing bringing stuff in? Like, you want to add stuff to your current. There's there is still stuff I would I would like to add, but uh, it, what it comes down to right now is money. Like I, I hate to sound like a pauper, but it's like in the past couple of years, I, I invested so much in new cages. I invested so much in the animals. I bought the house. We had two kids under two, so we're, yeah, it's been a crazy two years. I don't have the, the uh, pot to piss in, let alone a window to throw it out of. So well, I, I got to build with what I have. But I, I think I think like, you're smart. You know. I would much rather see somebody spend money on infrastructure. Yes. Than animals. That's what people don't learn. It's the other way around. I mean, they, I they blow their see. load on high end animals. And I hate to see that. And then, they, and then they put it in a shitty cage or yeah. shitty thermostat or shitty room with air yeah. conditioning on or something. They got yeah. their shoe rack next to it. They're yeah. Fucking, you know. <laughs> I, I, I agree 100%. Yeah, so I thought it, it sounds silly. So at the time, I was like a little envious of other people. I tried, you know, it, I'm just human, but you know, I'm like, damn, this person got that animal. Damn, they got that. I'm like, well, I did just spend, you know, several thousand the other day on, on cages. So yeah. I can't, I can't complain. I got to pick my poison. You know, this yeah. is the direction I went in. Cause I, I'm like you said, I want to be built for the long run. It's a marathon, man. It's not a race, man. Yeah, yeah. And those cages, especially if you love it. If you love it, it's not going anywhere. It's not. It's not do or die. This is never going to be my uh, my main source of income. I've seen what that does to people. When you start relying on what you love for an income or you start hustling snakes, you really it becomes a hustle. Then you start developing a bad name because it's if money, it becomes important. You know, if that's your main income, someone gives you money for a snake, 
something doesn't work out in the future, they want the money back. You spend that on your bills. You start fucking people over. People, it just becomes more complicated when it's no longer a passion and it's your, it's your, you know, bread and butter, and you got to feed your family off snakes. You know, I, I never want to be in that position until I'm in a position where I could retire and I have so many snakes, you know, being born out my ass that I don't know what to do with. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's smart, man. That's that's yeah. very smart. It yeah. definitely that, that's another reason why I never really came around too, because I'm like, I, I know how it works in the hobby. You know, if you're not really producing anything, then what's what's to talk about sometimes? You know, it's like I always felt like who that like even MJ is dying to get me on. I'm like, who the fuck wants to listen to me? I'm like, I got a nice cage, a nice collection, but I'm not producing anything right now. I haven't really done anything that yeah, I can, you know. Yeah, but that, Vince, you, that, you, you have great history, you know. Yeah. I mean, you, you've got history and the this is, I mean, it's not all about always producing shit. Yeah. yeah. That's, that, for sure. that, that's a fallacy. Okay. Yeah. So right now, Bill, back to your, your question on what I'm prepared for. I guess right now it's really just using what I have right now, my foundation, and building off of that, you know, not really acquiring anything else. And if I do, I mean, I, I Marshall, I got to get me some tiger stripe or something like that, man. That's, that's <laughs> probably my favorite stuff right there, man. That whole look, the old school, like rain, dream, tiger stripe, anything that's orange. Yeah. You know? I love that shit, that high yellow, orange, neon. It's just funny, yeah. man. It's my, it's my favorite out of all of stuff, better than the black, the blue. Vinny, I, I don't want to take away from Marshall's response because I want to hear, I want to hear Marshall reply. But I would just say that <laughs> the people that I know that have been in this the longest have grown organically, okay? Yeah. They have not invested a ton of money in the animals okay they they've grown organically they produce with what they can and then you know yeah. they sell that money that's that's what we call snake money yes yeah yeah then you have the snake money and you buy more snakes exactly right yeah. you know that's how, that's, that's how it turns into monopoly money in a sense <laughs> that, that's, then, the, that's the game plan man and then, you and then two, decades, the and then two decades later you know you got a nice collection and then you can start making money. Chilling. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, John Irby, is a, he's a prime example. Just like Patrick Holmes, the two of them, like when I knew them, they were they were just starting too back in the day. Now, me getting out of it, coming back, you know, years later, they're, they have amazing collections, yeah. beautiful uh, pairings under their belt. They've grown so much. Yeah, you know? and, I, I, and I can guarantee you those guys didn't lay out, you know, tons and tons and tons of money. You know, to get yeah. started, it, it's just been a yeah. process, and you just yes. got you got to pay your dues with time. Yeah, man, you right. got you got to accept the you know that it's, they're a heartbreaker species. You got to really be heavily invested in them, just time wise. And they're the type of snake where you, you got to look at them daily. You know, you yeah. can't just leave them alone. and I'll check them next week. You, they really you need to be on top of them. Even mm -hmm. just their their skin turger is different from my from my Amazon. My adult Amazons, they get like a glossy hard scales you know structure these guys that you they have a skin target you could pull like a human you know yeah but but the biggest thing that you need to check yourself with is is it because it's a double-edged sword right like you check yourself you check this stuff religiously every day yeah. and then and then out of your power something could just roll and die there's not a fuck thing you could do about it either you know what i mean no no but you don't know what that animal maybe had something from birth and you just never know. You know what I mean? Like you don't know. It's a ticking time bomb. For some animals, they're just waiting yeah. to die. It's like, you know, yeah. you know, people, unfortunately, they hit their thirties, forties, fifties. They have a stroke. They have a heart attack. It's something's been building. They have a clot that's been sitting there for a while. Like life is scary. And it's the same way with snakes too, you know? Yeah. So same shit. you never know. Everything's living one day. It looks great. And you know, a snake doesn't really have too much of like an expression, you know, it's not like, ah, fuck, I'm in pain, man. It's like, you just, <laughs> they just look like they're doing solid until they're not. Yeah, that's right. So, that's absolutely right. That's man. what sucks, man. You're like, I'm doing everything right. You walk in, it's dead on the floor. You're like, you, you want to punch a fucking hole in the wall, you know? It sucks, but it's just the way the fucking game goes, you know? Because you, you, you crumbles, man. You get your wins too. It's just all about yeah. hanging around and waiting for the wins, you know? And yes, yeah, yeah. And that's why I do think this Chondros and em and emeralds and stuff like that. It's a numbers game because you you have to invest a lot of time in that, and you don't know if they're always going to pair up. You don't always know if they're going to live through the pairing or even the cycling. They're just such delicate species compared it's, to other animals, you know? It's why it's why there's not sixty thousand of them available on Morph Market. It's why they'll always hold right. them back. Too, man always so oh i don't care how many 
ball python people or gecko people are jumping into them right now how many people are you know some people say oh it's the next bubble species whatever it's never going to be like that it's always going to stay a nice niche species that's always going to hold its value because it doesn't matter if I mean, you see a lot of these animals from great pairings and, you know, where do these babies end up? You know, you might see like one or two in the future, but you don't see all 20. They're going to go back crying, but they're going to go back crying to their ball pythons because that's where it's yeah. easy to be at. And it's, yeah. of, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> but listen, go ahead. They're, they're, you earn it. You earn it with them, you know, and that's yeah, what I'm looking to, to do. I'm, I'm looking to earn my stripes, man. So, yeah. Well, you, get, you no, there's no way around it. You got to earn them. And I got to, yeah, I got to yeah. do or die, man. Sink or yeah. swim. That's yeah, it. If you're not, then I got a really nice pet collection. <laughs> you're all in, man. Yeah. That's it. Come on. And it's a win it, man. Hey, listen, this episode was fucking awesome. Two hours went by super quick. Yeah, uh, man. Could, I could do more, bro. I had a great time, man. You guys are we, awesome. We are going to hit you with some hot seat questions, all right? So, you know, yeah, it's your first time here. So, in proper trap form, you do got to leave with some hot seat questions. And I guess Marshall's leaving for the night, so fuck it. I'm just kidding. Uh, all right, Bill, Marshall, you guys uh, are Vinny, Vinny, do you got to go to the bathroom first before we start? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I can make it this time. Okay. I start drinking. It just goes right through me, man. I don't know what's up. <laughs> I don't know. I have a feeling these hot seat questions might take a while, just depending on his answers. So we'll, yeah, we'll I, I talk too much, right? I got to no. keep it. Honestly, but it'd it be like what you have to say. That's the thing. It'd be one thing if you were talking out of your ass, which I think we could think we could think of one guest who did that. And we would <laughs> never have that again. Um, but anyways, listen, hot seat questions. Guys, get the likes up for the homie Vinny because this has been an epic podcast for sure. But it's hot seat questions time. Coming in hot. You ready, Vinny? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Frozen thought or live? Frozen thought. Would you ever cut a chondro egg or never cut a chondro egg? Yeah, cut an egg. On what day? 54, 55 at least. Uh, you know? if, you had to, if you had to choose one or the other, red chondro neo or yellow chondro neo? Oh, uh, I'd have to choose red. But if we're going with like old school, there was ye old school yellow lines that I didn't want a red from. Like you just didn't want a red from. You knew you, like the yellow would be the one that develops very little green and stays high yellow. Whereas the red, you know, you don't know what it's going to do. So that, it, it really depends. But 90, 99% of the time, red. Okay, what if you were comparing red to old school yellow neos? You mean like a like a lemon tree line or something? Yeah, like, like, that? like the stuff you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, I mean, some of those yellows were just like so clean. Like you had like such a clean, crisp yellow with very, very uh, reduced pattern almost. You know what I mean? Like when you saw the baby canaries, like those those were different. And that's how some of those uh, lemon tree lines came out. It was just a different yellow. You know, right. those were, be those were fucking beautiful, man. And and they, like they said, they developed differently. How it's like when you have a yellow from a, a high yellow line, it's not a matter of it changing over to yellow. It's just how many green scales is going to develop. Right. All right. Move you know? forward. Pre first shed meal or post first shed meal? Uh, I don't know. I haven't given, given it a try yet, but I think I'll, I think I might go for pre. All right. Yay imports or boo imports? Yay imports. Yeah, of course. I got One some great imports, man. One reptile you like to import to your collection anywhere around the world, what would it be? Sounds crazy, bro. What if – why can't we get those fucking giant Chinese salamanders, man? <laughs> those things are like fucking four feet like a dog, bro. I was what not expecting that. Turtles? What? Put them in with the box turtles. What about them? What would you say? Put them in with the box turtles. <laughs> yeah, be, those box turtles will be gone, yeah. man. Those things' mouths are like – There he goes. He went... Oh, shit. Blue. Blue Vince's mind. Blue is, <laughs> it blew his fucking. I think his I bro. think his battery might might have might have just died it or something. Mike dropped him right there. I think it's I think it's like ah. Well, well, I'm, well I'm, 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 I'll tell you my I'll tell you my hot hot seat question. Sure. <laughs> it was it was I was gonna <laughs> ask him import or domestic. <laughs> not, not Condor's beer. Oh, got you. Oh yeah. All right. Well, he's gonna come back, so don't don't spill the beans. I, I don't. Throw, he'll come back. I hope. I, I would think everybody has to come back. That's how we end it. <laughs> Dude, I think he's long gone. <laughs> he's, he's he's scrambling for his charger right now or something. I think, I think he ghosted us, man. No, nah, man. I will say though, this has been a really good podcast. I was not expecting to hear the history that we heard on tonight's show. I don't yeah, know. Me about you guys, but... Yeah, me neither. That pet that pet that pet store. Well, I mean, that's that's just awesome. That's like where that's the foundation 
of a lot of this shit, not just Condros. Yeah. These fuckers important stuff, you know, in, in the Bronx or New York, some, you know, shady, I can just imagine some kind of just shady pet store, you know, with just all kinds of just monkeys and, and reptiles and rats running around and shit. And I want to say, you want to know who I've heard the name Danny Gorman from? I think it was from Barcheck. I'm not joking. Really? Uh, because that Dan, that Danny Gorman is, it's been, that name's floated around, you know, not more than twice. And he's back. Here he is. I'm back. Oh my God. That was like my dream the other night, bro. Remember I told <laughs> you about that? I woke up disheveled, late for the show, had a fucking homeless <laughs> beard. <laughs> All right, we're almost, dude, we're almost done. Hang in there. Shout to your wife, by the way. All right, right. So I'm Mrs. Vincent. All right, um, all right. So Vinny, to spray and miss the Condro, or to never spray and miss the Condro? I miss them all the time, bro. I don't care what anyone says, man. All the time. You know what it is right now in the winter time. I try to spray around them, right, and soak the plants. But uh, yeah, I spray my cages all year round, man. Yay, sports or boo sports? Uh. I guess boo, you know. Right. I, I I'm at, I always grew up athletic playing sports, but I'm not. I don't watch them, man, anymore. I don't watch anything like that. Bill got me out of football. And now Bill's back into football, so now I don't know what to do. I might consider. I'm. I mean, I don't know. I got a real. Just I got the, a the national Stone league, right? Yeah. Shame because the Cowboys are terrible, right? <laughs> They've always been terrible. All right, all right. Uh, steak or fish? Oh, uh, steak. Unless it's uh, unless you talk about like shellfish, lobster, I'll pick that over anything. All right. Uh, big flexor or no flexor? Uh, no flexor. <laughs> uh, West Coast rap or East Coast rap? Uh, East Coast. Favorite East Coast? Oh, you're killing me. Man. <laughs> Favorite East Coast rap or East group, uh, rap group of all time in the East Coast? Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, man. I don't even know, bro. Because I, 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 really, I really like big. little... I mean, guess 50 Cent uh, was great, man. But I like I like fucking, like, what do you consider little Wayne Kanye? Like middle America? 50 Cent is West Coast, bro. <laughs> 50 Cent is West Coast. All right, all right. Well, Louis, well what's little Wayne? He's Louisiana. That's, no, he's, yeah, Louisiana. He's, he's south. South. He's south. He's south. Southern, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Ooh. All right, Vinny. <laughs> little word association. Say the first thing that comes to mind. You ready? Yeah. Milk. Cow. <laughs> Duck shed. So, first time Condro keeper. Oh, a <laughs> word for it. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. Get your get your setup right before you do anything. Invest in a setup, man. FedEx shipping. Oh, it's always worked for me. You got to go to the hub. Pick up at hub. Don't let it. Don't don't send it to your house. Don't be like that. Favorite designer Condro still living on Earth. Oh, still living. I don't know what's even out there right now. <laughs> Shit, man. I'm lost with that. I don't know what the fuck's even I, out there, man. I couldn't even answer that. I, I don't know either. Okay, how about yeah, right? favorite, right, favorite designer of all time? I like I like the dream. I don't know, something like that. All right. She's uh, all right. Last one for me, and then we're gonna go to Bill. Coolest reptile podcast in the world. Trap talk. Yes, I love all it. All day, I every day. Everybody, I want to give a shout out to my friends and family, everyone that watched. Make sure to like before yes. you stop watching. Get the lights right. up. All right, Bill, and what's subscribe. yours? Bill, what's yours? Did you hear Did you hear mine, Vince? He didn't. He didn't. He what was, what was it? Uh, import or domestic? And I'm talking oh. beer, not Condros. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. Freaking, I, I, got my, I like my blue moon, so it's import, you know? Uh, uh, okay. Import. He's upset. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> it's like Coors, Coors owns Blue Moon, but okay. Yeah, I do have Coors up in the fridge too. All right, All right. Marshall. Yeah, I got shots of Patron waiting too. So, <laughs> what you got, Marshall? Uh, what is y the craziest animal you remember getting at the pet shop? Oh, uh, I mean, the cra I guess probably the rarest were the graze monitors, but um, wow. I mean, uh, at the time, I mean, we had the Nile. We were gifted a Nile crocodile, and we, gave, we were given um, permits from the Bronx Zoo because we knew the customer, but they left it in the back door. So we had connections with the, with the reptile house of the Bronx Zoo, and they gave us uh, permits for it. We built an en giant enclosure, and only I was small enough to, to go in and shimmy myself because it was only like four, four feet tall, but three feet of like three and a half feet. You know, I was like five feet tall, but like 
three feet was water. And there was one area of land where I'd have to shimmy in there and I'd have a, a broom handle and I would fucking crack this thing on the head and it would rip the broom at, uh, handle out of my hands. It killed multiple alligators. That was that was Nile Crocodile Gustave we had. It was six foot. Oh my God, that's nice. Yeah, that was, the, that was probably the craziest thing we had, you know? Well, dude, uh, a lot of people in the chats think this is one of the best uh, All in the Tree episodes yet to date. And I got to say Thanks, thank man. you so much, bro. We had over 100 people tapped in on tonight's show. So what do you have really? to say? Yeah. yeah, what do you have to say? All the love and support you got on tonight's oh, show. Oh, man. Thank you so much, everyone. I, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still growing myself. So, you know, I just, I'm, I'm happy to be back in it. And uh, I love everyone who's going to be there with me for the journey. And uh, there's still so much to learn. Never think that you got it all figured out, man. No matter how long you've been in it, no matter that. how many how much experience you have, there's always something to learn. So don't, you know, don't be so closed off to everything, you know, that you hear, you know, it's always be open to, to learning more from other people. I love that, man. I yeah. love that. And so for anyone who wants to be on top of all your stuff, it's uh, VC reptiles underscore on IG, right? Yeah. Yeah. My original account was just VC reptiles, but I freaking lost it, man. I know it's all good. You're going to build this one yeah. up even fatter, man. So I think, yeah, you so much. man. Hey, enjoy the rest of your night for your, with your wife, and, and thank you uh, so much for everything. But, guys, it's a wrap. Give it up for the homie Vinny, VC yeah. Reptiles, ladies and gentlemen. Dude, thank you, guys, man. It's such a pleasure you guys, man. I'm so happy I got to be on the show and so happy to finally meet you guys, you know? Yeah, it was a pleasure. It was all here, man. Thank you so much, Vinny. Enjoy your night, man. Thank you. Yeah, peace out, See you, guys. Vinny. Thanks yeah. Peace. peace. I want to hit, bring him back and hear some of those stories. Yeah. I'm curious, because I know if we get him – He'll, he'll spill the beans on a lot of shit like Bill did. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Oh, well, get, get some more of those beers in them. I had a great time tonight. What, what would you say your overall assessment was, Marshall, on tonight, tonight's episode? Uh, I had a great time as well. I would agree that it's one of, been one of the better episodes so far and, and totally unexpected. Like, I, I had no idea, you know, who, I mean, who, who he was other than his Instagram profile. I had no idea that I had, you know, known him for so you know met him so long ago so sold him a snake at, at wherever what did he say daytona or i mean uh I mean, hearing the old old stories and uh bringing up stuff from the mvf I, it was awesome i had a great time yep bill what do you got to say uh yeah kind of along the same lines a lot of new names in the chat tonight yeah. they came they came just to see uh just to see Vinny. Uh, one of them, I think, MJ, you had to kick out. Uh, <laughs> that was on Facebook. So I, I've got to get my. I've got to get people. Uh, you two people couldn't see what that lady was saying. Only Facebook can, and nobody really was watching on Facebook as far as in the comment thread. So she was okay. just kind of. She was in her own world. Like who fucking knows what that lady was going through? Well, but. I, I, I don't know. I think she was here for for uh, Vin, uh, Vinny, but a yeah, lot of people here were a lot of new names. Uh, Hundred people in the chat. That's a lot, man. Yeah. It's awesome. And uh, so, yeah, about kind of like Marshall unexpectedly for me, I, you know, a great show. Yeah. And, and first and foremost, I want to say thank you to Patrick Holmes for kind of laying the foundation of what we had to look forward to. Because I'm not going to lie, man, there's not too many people who can last minute say, hey, MJ, let me hop in for a second. Because I, I mean, I'm not saying I'm a dick, but I normally have my shit how I want to lay it out, like at least before the day before. Right. So Patrick, just one of those individuals who could get his ass in here like that. And he did. And I'm so happy it went down the way he did because, dude, if Patrick has connections with you from back in the day, holy shit, you're going to have some stories to say. And thank you, Patrick. You're the man for coming in here and dropping that. And uh, great time tonight, guys. I got to say, next week's going to be awesome as well. So, uh, Marshall, we had over 100 people tonight. What do you have to say to all the love and support, bro? Thanks. It was fun. Right. Enjoyed it. The mayor. Thanks for thanks for tapping in. I, I gotta say, who who's coming on next week? Shh, motherfucker, no, stop it. You'll never. Do, know do you know? Do you know already? No, Bill, Bill. If if he did, he would already say it. I would have already spilled the beans, Marshall. Oh man. Do you know? I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> you you're not wrong there. I'll fucking tell you. <laughs> Marshall's uh, so out of the loop. It's a different loop. Hey, listen, I appreciate appreciate you too very much, uh, Marshall Mendez, Red Mountain Herps on IG, and of course the mayor, Phoenix Reptiles on Instagram. Go give them a follow and give it up for my two boys. It's a wrap, Marshall and Bill. Have a good night, ladies and gentlemen. See you guys. See you next week.
Peace out, boys. See you later. later. Always a time. I wish some of these podcasts would just go forever. Um, but till next time, thank you so much. An amazing All in the Tree Tuesday. And for sure, playing this one back. I play them all back, but this one might be played back triple times. But uh, thank you so much. Appreciate everyone. This is your first time hanging out. And if you really enjoyed tonight's episode, like we all did, who were tapping in, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, select all. You'll be on top of every single podcast. I will tell you, very special podcast happening this Thursday night. If any of you guys have been following me for a while, you guys may have heard or me even had a podcast with an individual named Stephen Cush. That's right, my OG young homie, Stephen Cush, that I started Unfiltered Reptiles podcast with and Forrest with back in the day. He's coming back to the trap, man. It's been a while, but I hope you guys have your Thursday nights cleared for this episode because it's going to be something you don't want to miss. All right. The true Hollywood story of Stephen Cush is going down. And Stephen Cush has a lot to say. He's going to be saying a lot. All right. Will we get Carl? We don't, can't promise you anything, but just be ready because Stephen Cush is about to go full Stephen Cush. All right. We're going to hear how he started with ball pythons and now he's just solely into some other heavier stuff. And I don't mean like, I just mean heavier species of reptiles. So just be ready for that. He's a good friend of mine, and I cannot wait to tap in with all you guys and him. So have a good night. Appreciate everyone in the chats. You guys are amazing. All right? I really do appreciate all the love and support, and I'll catch you guys here Thursday night. Have a good night. I'll see you at the top. It's a wrap for episode 449. It's in the books. Have a good night. Cheers.